Hello chat, welcome, good morning or good evening, whatever time it is there. How are we doing today? Fellas, is it nighttime or daytime for you? Fellas, do we have anyone in the chat who was about to go to sleep and then they saw the stream and they were like, Fuck! This goddamn Devil Leon 7 guy. Well, guess I'm not sleeping. open YouTube for a quick peek before bed and now I'm here <laughs> welcome hey guys welcome welcome how y'all doing it's a beautiful morning for me it's like 8 a.m. still I woke up like 4 a.m. today <clears throat> my sleep is slowly going back on schedule slowly uh, let's see I looked at uh, tier maker and there's already a tier list that someone made that includes Yakuza 8 so I don't have I don't have to make a new one but it's missing something can you guess what it is I'll give you five seconds Yakuza online <laughs> we I, I mean technically we, we can or should add that so might as well do it right for some reason, they also have the Brawler mod listed as one of the games, which is weird to me because I could be wrong, but this tells me they didn't like 7, maybe. Uh, let's see. Death Souls. Dude, why are you guys spamming Death Souls? What are you trying to say? Oh, wait, oh, wait. You answered my question there. Sorry about that. Uh, no, Dead Souls is in here. I think the only game that's missing is uh, Yakuza Online. That's it. And speaking of that, let's go ahead and put it here. All right. Let's go ahead and get the thing ready. Someone just... Hold on, I need to open Streamlabs. Who donated? Hold on. I'll get to you. Hold on. I 
damn, I love Yakuza 5. I like it more than 4, 3, 2, 7. Hey, that's fine, buddy. That's called an opinion. We're all allowed to have it. Unless you're brain dead, then people will be like, No! Misa donated two... I think that's pounds. Korohyo and Dead Souls S tier. Thank you, Misa. Valid opinions. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Are we missing anything from here? I think we're not, right? So hold on. Uh, Yakuza 1 original. 2 original. 3, 4, 5, 6. Like a dragon. Zeros there. Uh, Kenzan. Ishin. Ishin Kiwami. Kiwami 1, 2. Judgment. Korea 1 and 2. Last judgment. Shenmue is missing. What do you rank the car? Nah, I mean, I'm gonna include that with Lost Judgment as a whole. That's everything, right? Are we missing anything? Wait, hold on. I wanted to open some, like, ambient music from my own, uh, playlist. But the question is, what do we end? Okay, so... Lost Paradise. Oh wait, is it not there? Lost Paradise. Oh yeah, it's not there. How could they forget Lost Paradise? How could they do that? Lost Paradise. No, wait. We have a place in my country called Lost Paradise. <laughs> I typed Lost Paradise and that came up. It's a, uh, a water park, basically. Uh, streets of Kamurocho. Yeah, I guess we can add that. Streets of Camarocho. We need to replay that one day. A lot of games on this list in general. We need to revisit at some point. Ray to the water park. <laughs> okay, so one and two. Are we missing anything? Oh, the music is loud, hold on. That should be better. Thank you guys, thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the heads up. Did we forget anything else? Isaac is enjoying the music, look at him. Brand spanking new tier list, yeah. So, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, I, I saw someone saying it earlier. Oh, uh, here we go, Yakuza 5 and D tier again. Because of that, this tier list is not going to be the same as the last one. I'm actually kind of spicing it up a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to have a general objective ranking. So that means, you know, the, basically without any bias or like with as little bias as possible and also combine that with you know the community opinion basically or chat's opinion and then once we're done with that we go on to story ranking after that it's like basically just all object uh, subjective so i'm gonna rank the story based on what i think and then after that we do gameplay ranking and then after that we do soundtrack ranking which probably i mean Every game is S tier, but we'll see. And then, general subjective ranking, which is basically what I normally used to do. Um, 
And by the way, call me a nerd, but I made like a, a story bullet point list um, for those games that people think are flawless, but really they don't have flawless stories, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> Separate Yakuza 5, Snow Section as its own thing. Hey, there's an idea. Uh, actually, let me change these ratings. So let's put the usual S. A. B. C. I feel like D is good enough. We, we don't need... Well, this one says not played, but I played all of them, so... Delete that. I'm actually contemplating getting rid of, rid of D or altogether, but... Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? Interesting idea? Like all these different rankings? By the way, gotta say this right now. Um, I'm gonna try not to talk spoilers about Yakuza 8, but... There's no guarantees, you know, someone in the chat might not say something by mistake or, you know, what have you. So, go into this with, you know, awareness of that. D don't be like, oh, Leon, fuck you. Uh, but you're welcome to go, oh, Leon, fuck you later anyway, because of because of the list. Um, yo, JC, welcome, welcome. Okay. Actually, hold on, let me... Ca call me uh, a freak, but uh, I prefer to have these organized. I know that this website in general does not like to organize stuff. Like, you put them in a specific order and it just jumbles everything around. So, let's put that there. And then let's put Yakuza 0. 6. And then Kiwami. I think Judgment came after that. And then Kiwami 2. Uh, I'm gonna put, like, the spin-offs all alone. Nice, Lefrimo. Thank you, Encore. Thank you, buddy. Okay, so after that... Like a dragon. And then after that, Lost Judgment. And then... Yeah, and then basically most of that is spin-offs. I'm not gonna rank the Brawler mod, because it's a mod. Uh... Okay, are we ready to start this? So, if you missed it, we are doing five different criteria. So, first of all, it's going to be the general objective ranking, based off of, you know, just trying to get rid of all the bias if possible. And then, story ranking, gameplay ranking, uh, soundtrack ranking, and then um, my own ranking of the games, based on how I enjoy them. Hold on, let me open a new track. Actually, I don't even need to, probably, but... Okay. Are we ready? Alright, people, welcome! This is the uh, Yakuza Games tier list. Uh, the last time that I did this, um, it was... I think... Has it been a year already? I think it has. Uh, but ever since then, Asian Kiwami came out, and then Gaiden came out, and now we have Infinite Wealth. So, it's a good time to uh, revisit this tier list, because I feel like my opinion on some of the games actually did change since then. Um, and we'll get to that, we'll get to that soon enough. So, let's do this! Uh, first of all, like I said, we're gonna start with the objective ranking, so... This is not particularly my opinion, this is... You know, the... Uh, if I were to try to critique every single game... Um without bias, if possible. Or like, also, I guess you can say it's like the general community opinion of these games. So, let's do this. Uh, original Yakuza 1. Where would you guys put this at this point of time? This is a game that I feel like a lot of people have sentimental attachment to, but also the general public don't care about this game. Uh, they have Kiwami. Um, B. Yeah, I don't think this is an A, if, if, you, if you count the games that come later. I feel like it's either a B or C. Because remember, <laughs> there are <laughs> like 20 games coming. It's the first Yakuza game. Um, going back to this game at this point of time might feel a bit rough. You don't have as much freedom in controlling Kiryu. Um, 
the movement is very heavy. But it's also the start of the franchise, and it's a special game to me. And in my subjective list later on, I'll put this higher than now, probably. But this is a game that I don't know how many people would go back and play at this point of time. People who played this game will tell you, yeah, it's a good game, I love it, you know, so on and so forth. But... I would say it's either B or C at this point of time. Like, you can't put this in C, and then, for example, put Kenzon in D. You know what I mean? Objectively, yeah, it's like down there, C or D. Because there is a lot, a lot more better games later on. Yeah, I'm trying to put everything into account. Um, so yeah. Can we move on? What is this BGM? Um, it's a copyright free BGM, but like not the YouTube, <laughs> like royalty free uh, stuff. It's different. It's stuff that I subscribe to. I don't want to put like Yakuza soundtrack because there's a very real chance that they'll say, hey, yo, this is copyright material, which happened to something like Yakuza Zero's uh, Rain. Okay, Yakuza 2. Gameplay-wise, this is this game is a direct upgrade. Like, you feel faster. Um, you have more control over the direction and combat and what you do. There's more moves. Um, the story, I mean, you know, the story is always debatable. I'm trying not to focus too much on the story here. For this particular uh, title or um, ranking criteria. So I would say, like, B tier is probably good for Yakuza 2. It's a direct upgrade over the original Yakuza, and it's fun. But, like, it's not something a lot of people would probably go back and play. Um, unless you're, like, a hardcore OG2 fan, you probably would do that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so... That's good, I think. Okay, Yakuza 3. <laughs> oh boy. I can already smell what Chad is cooking. Um, 3 is a very controversial game. Um, which is funny because it wasn't a controversial game until Yakuza blew up. Before then, a lot of people, uh, I would say, loved this game. Like, that that controversy of, oh, Blakuza did not exist before, you know, the series blew up. People just love this game. Um... I would say maybe this would be it. What do you guys say? B tier for the most of it, then A tier. Hmm. General objective B. Okay, well, yeah. Yakuza 4. This game is a direct upgrade in terms of combat. You have three more characters to play as. Um, they all have their own, you know, battle, uh, street battle theme. And there's a lot of variety in this game. I feel like the, the characters alone make this game, like, just way better than 3. You know, in terms of content and all that. But I don't know if I would put this in high B or A. Low A, maybe. What do you guys think? D, someone said. C for story, A for combat. Yeah, objectively, objectively way better combat than Yakuza 3. And, and again, you have three different styles compared to uh, the Yakuza 3, which you only have one. But I feel like, you know, as far as... Um, like, Yakuza 4 is a very f fun game to replay, so I feel like either high B or low A would work for it. Let's go with A, then. Yeah, one of my favorite things about 4 is that it's very easy to replay. Okay, we, we can put it there now. <clears throat> Yakuza 5. I feel like this one is going to be either A tier or S tier, depending on who you ask. A lot of people either love this game, or like, you know, they enjoy it, but they don't think it's like the best. What do you guys think? S. Don't forget, guys, there's plenty of games coming. We can't waste S just yet. Low A. A... Okay, in terms of gameplay, it's it's a direct upgrade in terms of at least, you know, playable characters. You have five playable characters, whereas Yakuza 4 had four characters. There's a lot more content in this game. There's like five cities for you to, you know, explore. So... 
At bare minimum, it's above Yakuza 4. At bare minimum. <clears throat> Akiyama's not an upgrade, though. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Akiyama got a downgrade. Feels bad. But, like, you know, generally speaking, the scale of this game, the content... Um, Akiyama technically has more moves in this game, but yeah, he doesn't feel as good to play. But there's, you know, a lot more than just Akiyama in this game. Very high highs, but some low lows, yeah. What the hell is 4 doing up there? <laughs> General objective ranking. Uh, this is going off of, like, you know, trying to be as thorough as possible. Yakuza 4 has, you know, four characters. Yakuza 3 has one character, so there's more variety in Yakuza 4. The story, like I said, like five minutes ago, it's a... It's an opinionated thing. Uh, some people might like four more than three and all that. So I'm not. I'm trying not to focus on the story too much in the objective ranking criteria. There's going to be more criteria later. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I think this is a good placement. I feel like yeah, to balance between you know everyone who puts it in S and everyone who puts it in A, I think A is good for you because of five. A lot of people either love this game a lot, or they hate it. Um, I, I love the game, by the way. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. Yakuza 0. I feel like this is... Like, this game still remains the uncontested, uh, like, S tier. Um, compared to other games. So... Yakuza 0 doesn't have five playable characters, or more than five. It has two. But... Both Kiryu and uh, Majima have four fighting styles each. They start with three each, but you unlock a fourth one. And there's, like, a lot to, you know, each style. You could basically say that it's, like, different um, characters you're playing as with the, with the styles. Uh, not only that, the amount of content in this game rivals Yakuza Zero, uh, 5, I would say. You have 100 sub-stories in total, which is way more than 5. 5 has, like, what, 70? Give or take? This game has a hundred. Uh, there's a side story for both Majima and for Kiryu. Um, and there's a lot of mini games as well. Yo, Ghost, thank you for the super chat. Why is the music sad? Um, because tier lists always make people pissed, so we gotta be sad. Thank you, unofficial, for the super chat. <laughs> yeah. Tertibia, because of Fire of Fata. مو بترتيبي هذا هذا الترتيب ال شو يسمونه لو نحاول نكون بدون تحيز التقييم اللي بالتحيز بي بعدين اللي هو رأيي ياكز زيرو should have had zero playable characters yeah just you know you have a whole movie playing oh Ricky thank you for the super chat I see ياكز five is eight here is the licensed... I removed the licensed song tier list because I got 23 claims on that stream and I didn't want to take risks. Okay, um... Yeah, I feel like in terms of story as well, I don't... I know I, I said I'm not going to talk about the story much, but Yakuza 0 is one of those stories, you know, if we're talking about Yakuza as a franchise, most people love the game story. Like, as far as the previous games at least go, most people will probably tell you this This has the best story out of all of these. So, th there's a lot going for Yakuza 0. Um, yeah. I don't know what more to say. About it. It's Yakuza 0. Like, if you if you say Yakuza 0 is a bad game, that's just bullshit. You, see, you're allowed to have your own opinion, but Yakuza 0 arguably is what popular, popularized the franchise. And that's an undeniable fact. Um, so, yeah, th there's a reason. Zero uh, did that. Alright. With Zero out of the way, let's move on to Yakuza 6. I feel like this is another controversial one. W where do you guys put this one? On one hand, th this game brought a whole new engine, which means a lot of new assets. Yakuza 6 brings the most new assets, by the way, um, out of any game. So it has that going for it. A, B, high B, A, A, A. Okay, so it's either low A or high B. S. 
S. Wow. Yeah, Yakuza 6 is definitely a case of probably a better story than gameplay. Um, high B, mid A. Okay, so we know it's somewhere between here and here, but we just gotta decide. Uh, the gameplay, I mean, yeah, the gameplay is pretty rough compared to the other games. Again, it's a new engine. They were trying to revamp a lot of things. Uh, because, I mean... You can tell the combat is missing something. Well, the combat is lacking when you don't even have a stomp heat action, which is just a shame. So, I think high B is good for this game. There's clearly a lot of things missing in this game, but... There's also a lot to admire about Yakuza 6, in my opinion. Um, which is weird to say my opinion right now, because this is supposed to be a general objective ranking. But factually, Yakuza 6 does bring the most assets a Yakuza game has brought. At least maybe uh, um, since Yakuza 1 original, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is good for it. Um... Yeah, like, the this ranking right now, I'm trying to basically do the most agreeable ranking. Not just for the sake of being being uh, agreeable, but, you know, uh, trying to be as fair as possible to all the games. Um, and by the way, this being here in C tier does not mean it's a bad game. But if you compare Yakuza 1 original to Yakuza 0, you know, there's, <laughs> there's uh, something to be discussed there. Yeah, 6 does also have fully voiced uh, sub-stories. Uh, why is 4 an A? So, we we were talking about gameplay improvements. This game has a lot of gameplay improvements compared to 3. The story sucks, yeah, but the story is something that... John from the US will tell you, oh, I had a, I had a great time, and then... Mohammed from uh, Saudi Arabia will tell you, oh my god, this fucking story sucked. So, I'm trying not to go too much by story right now. We'll, we'll focus on the story later, don't worry. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, Yakuza 6 in high B. Now let's move on to Kiwami. Kiwami... Gameplay-wise, this game made Kiryu better to play. Uh, compared... Wait, what did I say? Kiwami made Kiryu's combat better than it used to be in Zero. A lot of people say this is a, like this should have been an expansion with how low budget it was. And I mean, maybe, but where would you guys put it? A, B, high B. I feel like, man, I don't know if this would be higher than six or not. Cause again, it's like a, it's, it's a, it's a budget title. Don't forget that. Um, so yeah, this game, as you guys know, adds like additional Nishiki scenes, which contributes to his character and like showing you more of his thought process and why he went down the path that he did, which I thought was nice. Um, I think, man, we're gonna get to the story later on, but I think I've only ever seen one person in my whole life say that the added scenes are bad because like it re removes all the nuance that one original had. I... Like, if you ask me, that's not how nuance works. Yakuza 1 just... You get out of prison, Nishiki's a bad guy now. <laughs> like... What happened there? And not just the bad guy, but... Like, he betrays everybody. And, like, kills the people you love. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I would say... At the bare minimum, this is an upgrade over the original Yakuza, which... I mean, it's obvious, but... Um, and then you have areas like soundtrack, a lot of people prefer the original, which, fair enough. But in terms of gameplay, you know... <sighs> hey, people are loving the music. <laughs> the Nishiki scenes were an objectively great addition, in my opinion. Yeah, Slayer, Slayer, I agree with that. <laughs> People love to hate just for the sake of it sometimes. I do think the Nishiki scenes are a good addition. Especially coming off of Zero. 
Um, but yeah, I, I don't know where to put this, honestly. Okay, just to ask you, ask you guys again. Would you say this is a B tier or A tier? Worse than 6 or better than, than 6? High B. A. Worse. Below. Below 6. Interesting. Kiwami does have better gameplay compared to 6. Like, he can do much more with it. Just as bad as six, in my opinion. Ah, uh, you gotta love tier lists. Like nobody ever agrees, but that's that's the beauty of it. Um. More side content than in six. I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Uh. Because it's a budget title, I'm gonna put it below six. Just going off of that logic. Uh, but it's still a very good game. Okay, I feel like I have to say this. Don't take this too seriously. This is just an attempt at like an objective uh, ranking. But it's not like definitive or anything. Okay, judgment. I feel like at bare minimum, this is A tier. Or what do you guys say? Actually, maybe B. Now that I think about it. <laughs> Easily A. S. Top of A. Low S or A? Okay, there's a lot of S and A. Okay. Okay, above Yakuza 5? Or no? I'm gonna go with what I see most of. Is it better than Yakuza 5? Yes. 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 Not better than Zero. No, in my opinion. Above five, definitely. No. Okay. See, I'm again. I'm trying to go with the majority here. Um, a lot of people seem to think this is better than Yakuza Five, so we'll go with that. But don't forget, guys. If a game is better than Judgment in your heart, you're more than allowed to have that. And you know me, I wouldn't put Yakuza Five in eight here. <laughs> So you know, if you're if you're like, no, this is not better than my favorite game right now, don't worry. <clears throat> I'm right there with you. Okay, Kiwami 2. I feel like this is another like hot topic. People either love this game or they fucking hate the guts of it. <laughs> Where would you guys put Kiwami 2? Thank you, Clorin. Thank you. Yeah, my big flop shirt. I have another one. B. B. Easy A. S. Whoa, D tier. <laughs> High C. Okay, I I feel like this should be above uh below six. Sorry, it's another budget title. Um, like going through the story, the cutscene animations are obviously scuffed. They look so bad. Like the the mouth sync as well. Oof, yikes. You can tell this is a budget title. That now the question is, is this better than Kiwami 1 or <laughs> worse than Kiwami 1? It has more content than Kiwami 1. The ending was laughable, yes I agree. <laughs> Kiwami 2 mouth sync is insanely bad. Yes, it is. Worse than Kiwami 1. Better. Better than Kiwami. Okay, th this this seems like it's a 50-50. How about we call it a truce and just put them side by side? Kiwami 2 has Man in Black. <laughs> He's silly better than... Okay, you mean the opposite. <laughs> yeah, see guys, Kiwami 2 will always be a mixed game. People will either just tell you like, yeah, dude, it's so, it's so good. And then others will tell you, no, dude, it fucking sucks. Um, Truce, L let's just put it here. Okay. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Despite the initial controversy of this game, I feel like it really popped off. It was a case of like... 
a loud uh, minority just thinking it's a bad game when it's a decent game. Okay. After Infinite Wealth came out, this might be a high A tier. Or what do you guys say? Or maybe that's just me speaking, and we'll get to that later. Yeah, I f I f <laughs> Okay. Below zero or above zero? Now that's a question, isn't it? I, I would say maybe below zero, as far as, you know, general opinion goes. On par with zero. Below, below, below. I'm seeing a few above, but mostly it's below. Okay. Because, like... The definitive Yakuza experience, I would say, is Yakuza 0. And, like, I know, you're probably thinking, Fuck you, Leon. No, that's not the definitive Yakuza experience. My favorite game is a, the definitive experience. And listen, I know you have your favorite game, but... Um, when you ask... When it, when it comes down to asking people, Hey... What do you think is the most definitive Yakuza game? Most people will tell you zero. Um, personally, it's above, but objectively, probably below. Right. Mm, I guess we can just roll with this for the time being. But yeah, Yakuza Like a Dragon, like... When they announced the game and, like, they announced the genre... You know, a lot of people were mixed, but then the game came out, people played it, and they were like, you know what? This ain't so bad. It's like that, uh, what's his name? The the big Shaq meme, I think, where he eats, like, the spicy sauce, and he's like, ooh. <laughs> exactly like that. That's Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, so yeah, good on you, Yakuza Like a Dragon. He did such an amazing job in winning people over. I've seen a lot of people over the years, by the way, who told me, yo, Leon, I, you know, I wasn't sold on Like a Dragon, but I played it and I loved it. And that says something. And now with Infinite Wealth, which we'll get to soon, um, a lot of I, I've seen a few people so far tell me, "Yo, Leon, I played like a dragon that didn't click with me, but I played Infinite Wealth, and I'm like, fuck yeah, this game is awesome." <laughs> anyway, Lost Judgment. I feel like this is also like no question S tier. The question is, where would you put it? Um. Double S. See, guys, it's insane how much of a difference gameplay makes. Like, you could have a dog shit story, and it stinks and reeks of, like, dog fart. But if there's good gameplay, then, you know, people will love that game. B. Mid S. S tier. Hmm, between the two, above seven, we can do that. <laughs> okay, sorry, I, I wasn't trying to say that the game story sucked, but compared to the first Judgment, I think most people will tell you that the first game's uh, story is way better than Lost Judgment. Okay. Oh yeah, the Kaito Files. Yeah, the Kaito Files was nice. Still think it's overpriced, but it's nice. Um, it also has no replayability for a $30 d DLC. Anyway. Um, like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. I'm actually really curious to see what people would put this. Where would you guys put this? Below 7. So this is the game that brought back Kiryu. Uh, there is the, the new agent style, the Yakuza style, which is basically his Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2 dragon style, but kind of, not revamped, but tweaked a little bit. A. Mid A. Hot take, Gaiden is beat here. A. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of A, like between A and S. Okay, here's the question. It's a bold claim to say it's better than Judgment, because Judgment is a whole game, right? But is it better than something like 5 and 4, would you say? Yeah, it's missing New Game Plus, which is a shame. 
Yes, no, yes, 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 no. Okay, I'm seeing a good number of no's, but also... <laughs> better than four, above five. So... Would this make you guys happy? Has good enough content, considering the price? Yeah. Thank you, Descendant, for the super chat. Guide in low A. <laughs> Below five. That's fair. Okay. Better than five. Okay, guys. Don't worry, we'll get to that. We're all gonna collectively crap on any game you want later. But for the time being, we're doing the, uh, the professional ranking. Okay. Um... Is that Mr. Snowiest in the chat? Welcome! <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I'm gonna try not to talk too much uh, spoilers with this one, but if you're looking out for spoilers, you know, I warned you in the beginning, just, just in case. Um... High A S. Easy S. Okay. This game is a direct improvement over 7, at the bare minimum. It's a direct improvement over 7 in terms of gameplay. Everything gameplay related- again, it's like what I said. Infinite Wealth is what Lost Judgment is to Judgment. In terms of gameplay, oh my god, dude, there's so many improvements. Story might be debatable. Um, I think I've seen a good number of people saying 7 had a better story. But, you know. Okay, are we satisfied with this? Best in the series. Damn. Low S, no new game plus. You know, the whole new game plus thing always throws me in for a loop because I'm not sure if I should count that when I critique the game. Should we? Above Lost Judgment. Above Lost Judgment. Above Lost... Wow, okay. Guys, don't make me change the placement just like that. <laughs> LJ sold like shit as well. Have you guys seen that Steam chart thing? Lost Judgment actually had a low amount of players compared to uh, Infinite Wealth. Okay. Shit on Sega for the New Game Plus situation, not the game itself. Recency bias. <laughs> God, imagine if we were all sitting in a room right now, and like, half of you shouting, Above Last Judgment! And, and like, one person in the corner, like, Recency bias! Recency bias! <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, we, like, we might have seen the same, like, recency bias conversation with Gaiden, but Gaiden turned out to be a really good game. And, and re remember, this is not, like, a personal ranking, which probably for most people, Gaiden would be, like, S-tier. Um, this is trying to be objective as possible. <laughs> Infinite Wall should be least above Lost Judgment. Possibly above zero. Wow, okay. Dondoku Island sweeps. I've actually seen a surprising number of people who didn't like Dondoku Island because they felt it's repeti repetitive, which I don't understand. Okay, are we good? <clears throat> are we good? Okay. Kurohyo. Okay, listen, we, we had a lot of banger games. I feel like if you were to compare, this would probably be somewhere in like B tier. Or what do you guys think? Easy A. A. Easy S. Guys. <laughs> Try not to think with your bias. B. C. B. 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 or C for general opinion. That That's probably the, the accurate ranking, yeah. Okay, put a one in the chat if you've never played Kurohyo. Never. 
I feel like this is a game like nobody ever played. Or, well, th that's a stretch, but you know. Like, what, maybe 20 people in chat played this? Actually, no. My, my chat is all, like, hardcore fans, so most of you probably did play it. Holy shit, <laughs> look at all the ones. <laughs> God damn. I love getting parried every five seconds. Definitely eight here. <laughs> God, Kurohio 2 is worse in that regard, by the way. God. I actually... I like Kurohio 1 more than 2 because of that. 2 is absolutely brutal. Absolutely. Okay. God, this is a tough one, surprisingly. Which Kurohio had random encounters that were hard- Yeah, that's Kurohio too. The random encounters in this game actually fucking suck ass. Um, for everything 2 did better, there's an equal amount it did work. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a very good way of putting it. Um, But man, these are really hard games to rank. Like, I don't know where to put it. Yeah, there's no general opinion. Nobody played these games. <laughs> there's like five people in chat. Um... I see, maybe? <laughs> maybe? Kurohyo V, 2 at C. It's a C for me. Yeah, I did hear about how these games were huge in Japan as well. Okay. Now the question is, is Kurohyo 1 better than Yakuza 2 or 3? Or just... Low B? You should do a tier list of the games based on soundtrack. Oh, we're doing that today. I see low B is fair. Okay. Low B. Okay. All right. Like a dragon, <laughs> Ishin. I feel like this is... It's actually surprising how, how hard this game just kind of dropped. Um... This is probably somewhere in B tier, right? The question is, where would it be? Actually, wait, 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 wait. L let's get the original Ishin first. OG Ishin, guys. OG Ishin. Where would you put OG Ishin? It is a grind fest, yeah. I feel like OG Ishin is gonna get higher rankings just because it's the original for that OG prestige. Never touched OG Ishin. Oh yeah, how many people in chat played the OG Ishin, actually? Good question. Is there a difference between the two? Yes. There's like... Some combat tweaks that, that are especially noticeable. Um, enemies have a lot more hyper armor in Ishin Kiwami. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff. There's sub-stories that didn't exist. Um, in OG Ishin that were made for Ishin Kiwami. A lot of it on okay I'll, I'll, I can't speak. Honestly, a lot of the changes between these two like a casual fan is not going to notice. They're just going to play the game and be done with it. But like if you're a hardcore fan and you pay attention to the details, then it's going to bother you or you're going to notice them. Mm. RGG's bad at remakes, but at least they're better than Rockstar remakes. <laughs> no Ryuji ass and remake F tier. Heat actions did... Oh, oh god, snow yest. <laughs> he just had to remind me. That is true. Heat actions in OG Ishin did 0.01% damage in OG Ishin. I think I said OG Ishin twice, but anyway. That was one of the worst things about OG Ishin, actually. I hated that. Um, Ishin Kiwami fixed that. But, like, Ishin Kiwami, Kiwami went two steps forward and, like, three steps back, maybe. Um, I don't know. I feel like we should put these together somewhere. Uh, okay, objectively, they have a lot of content. They do. B both Ishins. Uh, there's a lot to do. And they're definitely grindy games as well. Um, and listen, I know the card system bothers people, but that's technically... Okay, how do I say this? That's something some people will love and some people will hate, so I'm trying not to be harsh. 
on the two upper cards. A seems high for Ishinkiwami, and I love the game. Uh, this is just a temporary temporary placement. Zero is trash. Okay, what is your favorite Yakuza game, the dude? Let me guess. One of the OG? One or two? Well, I, I have something to, to tell you. Um, you're like in the 0.001% who can't admit that there's a better game. Where do we... Okay. How about this? This is this is better. I feel like as far as Kiwami games go, Asian Kiwami is like the least uh, fun, maybe. Or actually, no. I don't know. God. Ishin below six feels off to me. Hmm. Okay, let me ask chat. Is OG Ishin better than six or no? Ishin is technically like Yakuza five, but you play as one character. No. No. <laughs> yes. Big no. Really. There's one conversation about both Ishins that I never understood. People give shit to Like a Dragon and Infinite Wealth for being grindy. Ishin is one of the grindiest games to ever exist. This and Lost Paradise. I'd say they're equal. Ishin had me tired as hell. Same. <laughs> Same. And by the way, it's not a conversation of like, oh, OG Ishin wasn't like that. They're both grindy. They both are. The, uh, the OG arguably worse, by the way. Yakuza fans when they have to play the game, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Lost Paradise is also, like, it's, it's a horrible grind, for sure. What's the OC in the background? It's not from a game. It's from a website that provides me with the, the tracks. Speaking of that, let me change it. How come you rate Yakuza 1 and 2 of PS2 so low? Because this is an objective general ranking. This is not a personal ranking. If this was up to me, I would put OG 1 in like A. But like, you know, if you're trying to be as precise and professional as possible, like, you know, no bullshit, no bias, compare Yakuza 1 OG to like, I don't know, Judgment. There's an obvious, uh, uh, leap in there. Asian Kiwami is the only Yakuza game I stopped in the- Okay. God, I feel like I get- I keep getting sidetracked a lot. So, are we satisfied with Ishin here? OG Ishin? Maybe this would be better. No. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Gokudoni, how you doing, buddy? Nice. <laughs> Hope the grind goes well. If it's objective, why is infinite wealth better than zero? Oh, wait. If it's objective, why is infinite wealth under zero? Because no matter how you slice things, Yakuza 0 is the definitive Yakuza experience. I feel like it's hard to deny that. It's a classic for more than one reason. And, like, not just the classic, you know, in terms of, oh, this game is dear to my heart. No. This game is what revolutionized or popularized the series and the franchise. I can't fucking speak, dude. <laughs> in the West, what popular what popularized the franchise in the West? My bad. Too much brain rot. Holy shit. Race and see bias. Six is better than OG Ishin, Kiwami 2 is better than Ishin Remake. Is it? I feel like a lot of the things here are very interchangeable. 
Oh, yay. Kiwami is better than Zero. Take a guess at which game between these two made the franchise popular. And then you'll have your answer as to why Zero is up there and not Kiwami. Guys, read the text in the top left. That's how I'm ranking these games right now. Sheesh. It's like, it's hey, it's fine if you think Kiwami is better than Zero, but, you know. I'm just saying. Right now, I'm trying to go with objective ranking, if you will. Okay, I feel like we dallied for too long. Yakuza Dead Souls. I feel like this is like the, the only game that's here. So when this came out on the PS3, it had horrible frame rates. Um, explosions basically kill your frame rate. Uh, I heard people have crash problems with the game. Froob, if you know him, uh, invited him over for a podcast. He speedruns the game, or speedran the game before, and he played it on actual hardware, and it would still crash often for him. So, you know. This probably would be the, the D-tier game. Where's Kenzon? Over here. Now, where would you guys rank Kenzon? S. S. Sounds like personal ranking. C, D. I don't know about D, but like, I would say compared to the others, it's better than Kuroyo, I would say. Is it better than OG2 and OG3, or 3 in general? I feel like people would say it is better than Ishin Kiwami at the very least. And probably these Kiwamis as well. How does this sound? If Dead Souls is D, then Kenzon is D. <laughs> Kenzon is not better than Kurohio. Bait. Who am I baiting? Why so much Ishinkiwami hate? I don't hate the game. It's just, you know, compared to the other games. Kenzon better than 3, C. I feel like 90% of chat didn't play this game, so I'm not seeing much talk about it right now. Yeah, how many- Okay, put a 1 in the chat if you didn't play Kenzon. If you didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's your answer. Yeah, no wonder people won't know about this one. Okay, Kanzan in terms of gameplay is very similar to Yakuza 3. It's pr basically the prototype Yakuza 3. So this would be either above or below 3, depending on how you look at it. it it's it's around there. Yeah, people who played Kanzan in their hearts, it's an S tier game. But, you know, I'm trying to compare the gameplay mechanics, the... Uh, how polished, how refined the gameplay is, how enjoyable it is to replay and all that. Um, how much there is to do in a game as well. Below 3. Wow. Better than 3. Below 3. I'd say Kenzan is fairly placed, better regarded than Ishikiwami or K2. I'm actually surprised at the... Not hate, but the disdain for Kenzan I'm seeing today. I thought the Yakuza community had respect for this game. <laughs> but maybe it's like 5 people that do. And others are like, what the fuck is this game? I would say Kenzon's gameplay is a bit better than 3. Less blocking. Kenzon, best intro. Combat is way better than 3. How does one even play Kenzon? Just import the game. Five over Gaiden is crazy. That's not my ranking, that's the community ranking. General opinion wouldn't rank that high. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I feel like this this is debatable a lot. Because, like, people say it's better than 3, worse than 3. So...
God, I don't know. I shouldn't think this much about it, but I am. Um. Three better. Below three. See? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck the community thinks about this one. We'll just pretend. Yeah, just pretend they're in the same spot right now, okay? Oh boy, Yakuza Online. I don't think there's much thinking to be had with this one. It's a gacha game. Even Dead Souls has some dignity in that regard. <laughs> um, okay. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. I feel like this is a very controversial one. Because people, again, j just like Ishin or Ishin Kiwami, people either love this game or they fucking hate it. And there's a good reason. There's a huge grind. A huge grind. It's unbelievable. You think the turn-based games are bad? Play Lost Paradise. It's insane. Lo <laughs> no star killed my family. D. See? See what I mean? <laughs> Hello, it's me. I fucking hate it. <laughs> Snowiest is the number one hater of Lost Paradise. And like, yeah, I understand all of the hate for this game. I have a soft spot for it, but this is the objective ranking, so... Now here's the question. Where would you guys put this? Is it actually D tier? I didn't play it, but D- Okay, chat. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> B, C. Yo, Manic. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that, Snowiest? We need a retrospective video of this game. <laughs> Thank you, Ty Bell, for the three months. Thank you. Koro here, too. Lost Paradise. S for the final boss team. Mm, honestly, mid B tier, Kiwami engine is still enormously praised. The gameplay is really fun here. Again, the problem is that, God, the grind you need to do is insane. So, the way it works in this game, let me tell you, if you never played this game. You hit chapter 4, right? Well, guess what? The enemies are now level 30, and you're level 20. So, if you go into those fights, you're gonna get fucking demolished. Have fun, like, beating the enemies in, like, 100 hits per enemy. If you don't want to do that, you have to stop and actually do side content. Just anything to level up. So, it's- that- that is like, one of the lowest lows of this game. It's horrible. But, but, once you're past that, there's a lot of fun in this game. And there's a lot of content as well. But a lot of the content is super repetitive. It's- you think Ishin is repetitive? Oh my god. <laughs> this game. Are we satisfied with this placement? What do we think? Is the side content good? There's some really good side content, yeah. But then, like, if you want to progress in some of them, you have to, like, do the same thing a hundred times. C feels fair. Fair. Okay, seems like a lot of people agree with this. Um... Okay, Streets of Kamurocho. I mean... I feel like just by the fact that it's like a barely a game, then <laughs> you know, probably better than uh, RGG Online. But I mean, as far as the other games go, imagine like okay, I know you guys like this game, but imagine putting this on like high B, and then Yakuza Six is below that. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it's a short game, purely made for like the fans. That's it. It's a nice game, by the way. These rankings, like, Korohyo 2 right now, doesn't mean it's a bad game over here. But compared to the other games, there's definitely things that bring it down. Um, I feel like this needs a special ranking too, because it's, it's so different. Yeah, it's a good game. Uh, the only reason I'm putting it here is because, you know, you have giants over there. And then this one is like, a kitten. And finally, we have the Brawler mod. Ho ho ho. We agree? <laughs> it's, I, I did not expect to see this here at all, but 
For some reason, whoever made the list may have put it here. <laughs> Jerino in chat, the mod creator. Hell yeah, he would agree. <laughs> okay, can I... Uh, if I reset... Okay, so this was the objective ranking, the objective ranking, like what the community thinks, what, uh, not just what the community thinks, really, like, as far as direct upgrades go and all that, you know, I feel like this is a, this is an okay tier list. Alright, now I'm kind of afraid if I reset, do they all... Oh, I have to re-upload this stuff. God damn it. Okay, hold on. So, we add Streets of Camarocho. Okay, let's uh, reset this as well. S. So now we're gonna do the story ranking. So from here on, it's gonna be subjective, which means you have you have every right to go fuck you, Leon. Wait, what? Oh. So yeah, for those who missed it, we're doing several rankings today, not just one. So we finished from the objective ranking, so people don't get pissed at me for put putting five somewhere they don't like. Wait, uh... Yo, x Brett, thank you for the super chat, buddy. I think you can chat now, you don't have to do super chats anymore. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I would love to see Yuck as a character in a second game one day. Okay, so we did objective ranking, now there's story ranking, and then there's gameplay ranking, and then there's uh, soundtrack ranking, and then there's gonna be the subjective ranking, which is my opinion. What's the BGM? I'm using BGM from a specific website. You basically subscribe uh, for the service for money, and they provide you with a shit ton of stuff. It's for creators. It's called the uh, Artlist. Because ever since all the copyright notices, I was like, alright, fuck this. Gotta find me some support. Yo, Jorino, thank you for the dragon tier, buddy. Thank you. Mr. Jorino, thank you. Soundtrack, yeah. M <laughs> almost everything is best tier. Okay. The story ranking. This is gonna be an interesting one. And again, I warned about this in the beginning, but if you're looking out for spoilers, maybe now, now is the time to... Uh, abandon ship, if you will. When is the Leon era ranking? What does that mean? For the soundtrack, shouldn't you start the new- No, I'm not gonna play stuff, I'm just gonna talk generally about them. Okay, let's do this. OG- So, like I said, from here on, this is all gonna be subjective. The story ranking is gonna be my opinion. The gameplay ranking is going to be my opinion. What, what's, what's, oh, the soundtrack is going to be my opinion. You know, so on and so forth. The objective one, we just finished from. Thank you, Alex. Two people complimented my floppy shirt today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. OG Yakuza 1. Pretty solid story. It was the foundation of everything we've come to know. But, you know, as most Yakuza games, I feel like there's a direct missing link. We barely get to know what happens with Nishiki. Um, cause, like, for all the, uh... Thank you, x Brett, for the mental well-being checkup. Thank you, I'm good. How about you? The Borgar flop. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I need to get more floppy shirts. Yeah, the, the beginning of everything, basically. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of missing links in this game, which that was even more evident by the fact that they added scenes in Kiwami. Um, and yeah, 
Actually, wait, let me open my, uh... Story. Um... L like, bullet point list. Okay. So yeah, what, what I wrote about this game... The game doesn't establish or show the exact thought process that led Nishkin to the drastically different path he ended up taking where he betrayed everyone he knew. And just for money and power. That, that's it. It felt pretty... shallow. Um... But, you know, all things considered, it was still a good story. I liked it. Um, yeah, I'm actually contemplating either A or B. I think I'm keeping it an A purely for the nostalgia factor. Two has the worst story. <laughs> Guys, wh why are you so mean to Yakuza 2? Come on. God. You know... So, you know how people said for Yakuza 8, a lot of it feels like there's nothing happening or there's no story? Call me crazy, but I see some of that in Yakuza 2. Because here's what happens. Kiryu meets Ryuji, okay? And they have this tension for no, for no reason. Um, and then stuff happens until they fight. And everyone is a secret Korean as well. Um, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. Like, a lot of things happen in this game, and I feel like it doesn't really do much. The flashback to the Jingwen Massacre was nice. But... I don't know. Probably my favorite part about this game, honestly. The whole Jingwen Mafia, like, history and flashback. But that's it. Like, the, the whole, oh, this guy's a <laughs> Jingwen member thing. I, I hate that. Because they do it so much, and it's, like, so cheesy. Cheesy is a good thing sometimes, but not here. Too many, too, many, too many villainous groups, none of which are fleshed out enough. Yeah. I don't know. It felt like they didn't know what they wanted to do with Ryuji at times as well. Maybe it's just me. Um... But I really do like how brutal the Jingwen Mafia is. That was the highlight of the of the game for me. Um. Yo, Toru. The world feels way bigger in 2 than other games. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, coming off of OG2, um, you had pretty much three different cities. Guys, don't forget about the best <laughs> mastermind. <laughs> Takashima. Just shows up at the end, shoots everybody, literally shoots everybody, uh, doesn't reload, and keeps shooting everybody. <laughs> um, there's, there, there is potential in this game story, but I feel like it doesn't pay off like Yakuza 1 did. Um, I don't know. Daijin Kim, baby! Kill you. I know I betrayed you, but please. Believe me, this time. Takashima is hilarious. Like, man, Takashima is so fucking funny that that it, it's actually kind of growing on me. Maybe uh, that's okay, right? B tier, maybe even, maybe even. Hmm. But yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on this one. Uh, not a big fan of Yakuza 2's story, personally speaking. Um, Yakuza 3. Okay, this one is a hit or miss for a lot of people. So, in my uh, bullet points here, I wrote... The orphanage divided people as some... Loved... Uh, the, the orphanage parts divided people as some of them loved those parts and others hated them. It was like the worst thing about the game for those people. One thing that's undeniable is that it, contrib it contributed to developing a new side of Kiryu. One of a gentle soul that is attempting to leave behind his old life. It's probably the most they've shown us um, in that regard. And I feel like it was believable. What do, what do we think of that statement? Because like, you know, Yakuza 4, oh Kiryu, we need you, come back. Yakuza 5, oh Kiryu, we need you, come back. Yakuza 6, oh Kiryu, <laughs> you know? But this game, it felt like... It felt like the best example of that. Because, like, it was pretty low-key. It wasn't like, oh, you know, it wasn't, like, very blatant in how much they needed to carry you back. Um, 
In Yakuza 3, Kiryu heard about the Toji's involvement of everything that's going on, so he wanted to check out what's going on in Kamurocho. That That's all there is to it. Um, and then the orphanage parts, I would say, I, I like them personally. Again, they added the side to Kiryu that wasn't there in 2 and 1, or at least not as much. Um, yo channel, thank you for the super chat. Yakuza 3 is peak, yeah. Yeah, I would say Yakuza 3 did most of the, um, like, build-up and development that was necessary for every subsequent game, honestly. Yakuza 4, 5, and 6. Especially 5 and 6. And Gaiden. So 3 definitely, uh, is up there. I will say, though, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the Mina fight kind of came out of nowhere. It felt like... I don't know, maybe I'm talking out of my ass with this one. Um, you have a legacy name? Tamiya Plot. Hey, we don't slander Tamiya in this house. We love Tamiya. I even have a dedicated Tamiya emote. <laughs> in retrospect, 6, Gaiden, and 8. Yeah, they definitely made 3 way more important than it was. Yeah, Mina could have used more development. Like, his whole character is just, you know... Jealous orphan. That that's it. That's literally it. But otherwise, you know, this game is amazing. Also, the game has Andre Richardson. I love that guy so much. He's like the cheesiest comic book villain you could ever come up with. And now, you know, we know he's there in Infinite Wealth. With his own bar. Anyway, Yakuza 4. <laughs> It's funny how much I don't like this game's story, but at the same time... But at the same time... It's one of the most fun Yakuza games. It's insane. <laughs> God. Yeah, like, it's so bad it's funny, I don't know where to put it. Okay, chat. Is Yakuza 4 story better than 2 or no? Let's see you uh, say that. Because, like, these these are around the same for me. I honestly expected to put one of them in D. But I want to try not to be too harsh. No. No way. <laughs> hmm. Equal, slightly better. Worse than two, but infinitely more entertaining. I think that basically describes how I feel about it. Every time we play this game on stream, I just keep those cutscenes because we all laugh. <laughs> yeah, the story is entertaining, I'll give it that. Also, two has quite, like, this is gonna sound like it's a, it's just a 2 issue, it's not. But 2 has quite a bit of filler, and also there's a lot of, like, fetch, uh, fetch stuff you need to do, like, oh, go here, go, go there, carry you, bring me the panties and the beer. Um, to be, like, to be fair, a lot of Yakuza games have that, so I don't know why I brought this up. Anyway. Yakuza 5. I think this is no surprise to everyone watching right now, but I absolutely hate the story of Yakuza 5. Um, in fact, I have a whole uh, Word document on Yakuza 5. Do you guys want, want to... Do you guys want me to read everything in there? <laughs> Let's see. Actually, most of the stuff I've written is um, about the gameplay, not the story. I'm not lying, by the way. So far, it's two pages. But it could get more. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that when we get to uh, the gameplay ranking. But I actually do have a whole uh, file. But for the time being, I wrote a little thing. Okay? So Yakuza 5. Akiyama and Saijima return, but don't exactly do much. Haruk and Shinoda are new playable characters. Kiryu tries to leave behind his family as a means of protecting them from his past, catching... Uh, Catching up to all of them, and one day potentially ruining something. 
there's a lot of controversial beats in the story, a lot of characters that amounted to nothing in the end. Um, I feel like that's something... Man, I don't know. But, but like, one thing that is undeniable, there's a lot of characters in Yakuza 5 that showed up just, just to disappear. Why is three so high? It's a good story. And it's also my list, so if you want to put uh, Yakuza 3 in D tier, you're more than welcome to. Stream your own list, actually. Uh, I'll watch it. No way 5 stories worse than 2 or 4, in my opinion. Here's the thing. Yakuza 4 is a bad story, but to me, I find it funnier than 5. 5 is just a sl You don't have time to laugh. Like, you just don't. It's so long. It's insane. Not just long, actually. A lot of it is just unnecessary. Akiyama and Saejima did not need to come back at all, in my opinion. They did not need to be there, but they are there. But Shinada... I like Shin... Listen, I like Shinada, but... They just had to tie him into everything that's going on. And it just... <laughs> One saving grace about Yakuza 4 is that it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible, laughable story, but it's, you know, you get through it quickly, or at least relatively quickly. Um, it's actually insane how many of Yakuza 5's problems could be, could be fixed if you could just skip, like, the in-game dialogue. It's insane. So, if you haven't ever seen a speedrun of Yakuza 5, Half of the speech one is skipping dialogue. Oh my god, that's so bad. Leon, I thought you changed your opinion on 4 and loved it more. This is just the story. See? Just the story. We're gonna get to gameplay and all of that later. Yo, Darren Wong, thank you for the dragon tier. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, what's next? Zero. Would you guys burn me if I put it here? <laughs> Here's what I wrote about Yakuza 0 in my, uh... So here's the thing. People love to say Yakuza 0 is flawless and, like, perfect and all that. And, you know, when whenever they... How do I say this? You know what? You know what I mentioned earlier about people saying, "Oh, Infinite Twelfth doesn't have a story," and that, all, and you know, all of that. That made me think about Yakuza Zero, and you know why? Here's what I wrote about Yakuza Zero: For a game about the origins of two characters, you barely see any origin story. Um, the game instead shows you both Majima and Kiryu while they're already in the Yakuza, or you know, in the middle of all of that, just at a much younger age. You never see how Majima actually met Kiryu. Um, the epilogue scene implies they already met in an unseen period. Did you guys ever think about that? People had such a huge problem in my chat while I was, while I was playing Infinite Wealth. Like, oh wait, when did when did the party meet Kiryu? Like, you know, that, that's a big deal. What about Zero? What about Zero? Nobody questions that. Like... <laughs> come on, guys. Yeah, it is their origins, but not really. It's more like a flashback or, you know, an episode of their past, not the origins. Can you just get a photo of Shinada and put it in S tier? Okay, Snowiest made that request. We have to do it, guys. People sometimes ask me, oh, Leon, you, you said Yakuza 0 is not perfect. How come? Well, there you go. The whole premise of the game is kind of... weird. Shinada's cringe. Mods, can we get abandoned that guy? Yakuza 5 has more backstory for Majima than Zero. That is actually true. All, like, <laughs> the only backstory you get from Majima in Zero is 
the flashback with him and uh, uh, Saijima. That's it. Anyway, um... God, I don't know. Zero is a very good story, don't get me wrong. But for a story about the origins, it doesn't show you stuff you would expect to see. Um... Wait, wh <laughs> why did I change that? <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's more of a story of how they became legends and not how they started out as Yakuza. Yeah, Saijima was not even in Zero. You know who else wasn't in Zero? Yumi. They mention her in one sentence, they're like, oh, yeah, Yumi is in high school. Um, Yakuza 0 was the perfect chance for them to actually do something for Yumi. And guess what? They didn't do that at all. They just... <laughs> they mentioned her in one sentence and they moved on. <laughs> or Nishiki's sister, yes, thank you. And Kazuma. See, guys? Yakuza 0 is not perfect. I told you. Like, hold on, let me add this. Like, you barely see anything about Kazuma. And not just that, by the way. Kazuma, like, you barely see any interaction between Kazuma and Nishiki. So, because of that, you naturally come to the conclusion that Kazuma just don't, doesn't give a shit about Nishiki. It's actually kind of funny and sad for Nishiki. God. Yeah, you know what? It's a good story, but... To be fair, if we added them, we'd wind up with a story like fu yeah, True. Yeah, that is kind of true. Unless they rework the whole thing. I don't, God, I don't know. It's a good story, but let's just keep it in S for now. Okay. Yakuza... Which one came first? Kiwami? It is probably the most cohesive... Yeah, th that I can agree with. It is a pretty cohesive story. Um... But yeah, um, I just meant to kind of bring up some doubts about Zero in this tier list, and I'm glad that I did. Um, because yeah, like, it's worth talking about Zero. And how, you know, despite it being very popular and very good, the story is not perfect. Okay, Kiwami. I would say this, like, just the story. This is not the game, not the gameplay. The story is better than uh, Yakuza 1. You get more Nishiki scenes, basically, that's it. Kiwami just made the story, yeah, more personal, more sad. Seeing Nishiki gets scammed and just fucking <laughs> beat around by everybody was uh, pretty sad. Um, Yakuza 6. I feel like for some people this is D tier, and for others it's like S tier. Um... I like a lot of what 6 did. I do. But... I feel like 6 is more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Digestible. Now that we have Gaiden and uh, 8. Or what do we think? T-Pose Haruto. Yeah. The secret of Onomichi. <laughs> the, se uh, the secret of Onomichi topic is funny to me because it's such a big deal to some people. But the fact that it's not a big deal to Kiryu is the whole point, in my opinion. Kiryu did not give a shit about the boat. He had no reason to give a shit about the boat. The boat was there just to explain how... What's his name? Uh, uh, Iwami Senior. Senior. Uh, Daddy, Daddy Iwami. How he got his wealth. That's it. Um, th th that's all there is to it. Yeah, it it's a boring, maybe, plot twist, but... Mm. Leon, you forgot how the ending of 6 is ruined by having Kiryu return? Oh, we're gonna talk ab about that. The whole Kiryu returning thing honestly doesn't bother me anymore, because... With Gaiden and Infinite Wealth... It's just gonna be one of those things that... 
how do I say it? Like, people will hate it, no matter what. So, I just don't give a shit anymore. If the game is fun, it has a lot of highlights, that's good enough for me. Hot Take 6 has the worst combat. No, I, I see what you mean. And I do think there are people who think that as well. I think it's a contest between Kiwami 2 or 6. Um, I feel like B tier is good for this game. It's like just somewhere in the middle. It's a good story, but um, they could like they could have done more. It has a lot of my favorite villains, by the way. I love Ed. I love Jungi Han. I think you guys already know that. Somi is awesome. Um, and despite you know the whole little baby thing, the Iwami fight was pretty good in my in my opinion. Just you know thematically, yeah, the the gameplay itself could have used more, but. It was so satisfying beating the shit out of Iwami. I love that so much. Um, Jimmy, yeah. <laughs> Had trauma removed. Koshimis is also good, yeah. They could have done more with him, I think, but. Or, no, maybe not. B for no blue jacket, yeah. Okay. With six out of the way. doesn't really change much for me, honestly. They added, like, the Majima Saga, which... Yeah, it's nice, but... Like, it's... It doesn't do much for me. Mm. Below OG for the rain scene. God, that rain scene is like... God, that was a saying. What was it again? Something something like... The, the rain scene is like World War III for some people. That's not the exact saying, but I think you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it's a shame, but it's not big enough of a deal for me to really care. Mmm... Just rank the Majima Saga and the Kaito Files separately? I mean... I'm fine with with ranking the games as a whole. The, the Majima Saga is about how I feel about Yakuza 2 in general. Da -da -da. But yeah, I feel like this is a good placement. Judgment! Okay, the story of this game... is amazing. Arguably better than Zero for me. Or actually... I don't know. If we're talking about the story only, then yeah, sure. But like, if we also include the fact that there's so much... ...padding in the middle... I'm not a fan of that. But yeah, the, the story- as far as the story by itself goes, it's amazing. Like, it's probably better than Zero- <laughs> yeah, because Zero, which is saying something. Yeah, and I love how the Judgment games have a darker story than most of the Yakuza games. Um, better than zero, but worse than Shinoda. Yeah, we're, everything is worse than Shinoda. Mm -mm. I did like the world building in zero as well. Uh, sorry, Judgment as well, because you did meet locals, you talk to people, so there is some of that in Judgment as well for sure. Okay, Lost Judgment. I like the story of this game, but not as much as the first one. It's good, but I do think the first one, like, is, is miles better. What about you guys? Yeah, I love Akatsu. I love Soma. You know, you know. A lot of the characters in this game. Do school stories count? No, we're just talking about the story, purely. Kaito Files and S. The Kaito Files was okay. I would say also A tier for me, like where I would put this. Leon, have you thought about how this affects Sawa Sensei? Buddy, I'm gonna just say it. Fuck Sawa Sensei, how about that? Okay, Yakuza like a dragon. I think I like the story of this game more than Zero. 
What about you guys? Because, like, as far as bringing a new character and establishing, you know, everything about him, the backstory, um, how he develops as a character, the people he meets, the bonds he creates, um, and how the game respects, by the way, the legacy characters, I love that so much. Like, there's a lot about this game that does, um, you know, the franchise justice. And I love that. Now, you could argue about the return of some characters, yeah, sure. But that's something I honestly just gave up on, like, a long time ago. I just, I don't, I don't care about it anymore, because... It's just gonna affect every single game <laughs> because of that, you know? Um... So I'm just living with that at this point. Mirror Face. I don't think Mirror Face is as bad as people say. Call me crazy. Because, like, the guy shows up for just, what, what, like, one, two plot points? That's it. He didn't need to do any more. I don't think Mirror Face needed the whole sub story. I don't think they needed to explain how he left the scene. He's a criminal, for God's sake. Of course, he's gonna escape unnoticed. Um... Now, granted, yeah, like, him changing heights and voice and all that, yeah, it's crazy. But guess what? You know what else is crazy? The superhuman strength all, the, all these characters have in the whole franchise? If superhuman strength is not too much, then why is superhuman vocal cords too much? I don't know. It's minor enough for me not to care about it. <sighs> Exposition was a little bit much in 7. Yeah, I mean... I would argue even Zero has a lot of exposition. There's a lot of Yakuza games in general with exposition and plot dumps. Um, do we forget that Ichi goes into... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Almost every game has absurd amounts of exposition, and 7 isn't near the top of that list. When I was doing the marathon, like, not, not the recent one, I think last year, or before that, 7 does have a long info dump. I think it's longer than Tamiya. But, like, the info dumps, again, are just, like, a trope in all of the Yakuza games at this point. It doesn't bother me too much. Unless you can't skip it. You know, like, which game? Yeah, that one. Now, see, it doesn't bother me as much with 4, because they don't drop a whole fucking novel. Um, they say a few sentences, and you move on. By the way, something that I noticed, noticed about Yakuza games... Compare, like, the info dumps in Yakuza 1 to the info dumps in Yakuza 4 or 5. It's actually insane. In 1, at best, you get, like, a couple sentences, at least in-game dialogue. And you just, you just move on. But as the games progressed, <laughs> you get so many of them. Have you guys thought about that? One was pretty simple in that regard. I like one for that. Um, Will we do a grounded tier list? Oh, we need to do that, yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, what was the last game we did? Was it this one? Because the plot gets more convoluted. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Gaiden. Okay, Gaiden. God, I don't know where to put this one. Because, like, here's what I wrote about Gaiden. I actually skipped over a bunch of games that I wanted to say things on in my uh, notes. So, Gaiden is a game that starts by a chain of events that could have been easily avoided. But it ends on one of the strongest notes a Yakuza game ever has. People call Infinite Wealth's story, like, dumb or unnecessary or, like, you know, whatnot. But look at Gaiden. A lot of the beginning is like, yo, Kiryu, we're gonna threaten the fuck out of you and your family, even though we could just sit down and talk. You know, that's what I'm talking about. All of that didn't need to happen, but it did. Um, it's a good game, though, still. It's a good story. I like it. But, as with a lot of Yakuza games, a lot of things could have been avoided. Um, and I just don't know where to put this one.
Nice, thank you. Gonna get crucified, but Gaiden is hard carried by the fin No, that's what I that's what I was saying. Gaiden, like the first couple of chapters in Gaiden, barely anything happens. Barely anything. Like there there's there's not much that happens. But god, that <laughs> ending, oh my god. It does like most of the work. And it's insane how much it does as well. In just one chapter. Um so because of- I really don't know where to put it. Maybe this is good enough. Yeah, Gaiden's final chapter, without question, I, I think most people would, would agree with this one. Gaiden's final chapter, if it's not the best final chapter in all of the franchise, it's one of them. Now, do we agree with that statement or no? Now watch the OG boys. Oh, fuck you! OG 2 is better. Yes, agreed. We do. Yes. Okay. Okay. I feel like this is a good placement for it. Okay, what do we move on to next? I might save Infinite Wealth for last. Yakuza Online. <laughs> Yeah, great story. Okay, you know what? You know what? Actually, some of the stories you find here are actually funny, but also putting it above five feels like a spit to Yakuza Five. So, yeah. I wish I could talk about the stuff you find in this game. Shirtless Jingoda. Yeah, that alone makes it better than Yakuza Five. <laughs> There's a lot of stories in Yakuza Online, you guys would be surprised. Yeah. If you've never heard... So, you know how Richardson... Um... Well, I'm not gonna say too much, but... Richardson has a character story in this game, where he goes around Kamurocho just enjoying karaoke, good food, and all that. Um, and the ending to his story is getting called to, um, ambush Kiryu Kazuma. And I think that's sick. Like, like there's a lot of stories in this game that are interesting. And then, of course, you have uh, Shirtless Jin, Jin Goda. And, by the way, a lot of this game is canon, apparently. But anyway, let's move on. Um... Kuroyo. Ooh... I really enjoyed Kuroyo one story. But man, the ending just kind of... ...fell apart really quickly. I, like, god... I wish I could remember enough, but I just remember, like, this consistent storyline going on. But then in the end, it's like... Oh, I wanna, like, honorably challenge this evil guy who's just so evil. But despite him being so evil, I want to be fair to him. Like, it's so weird. Tizen is awesome. Yeah, I love Tizen. Um, I think this is a good placement for it. Okay, Korohyo 2. Call me crazy, but I think Korohyo 2 is nowhere near Korohyo 1's story. It's all over the place. There's so many ca- It's the Yakuza 5 of the Korohyo games. Let's put it that way. Mm. Korohyo 2 is better than 1. There are some things better about it, but... In my opinion, the story was not one of them. I don't know. That That's just me. Um... There's definitely interesting characters in this one, like, you know, what's his name? Ryo? Um, Kuki? And the bondage dude? Four should be in its own tier. <laughs> um, and there's also this, like, so you know how Yakuza 5 is about Yume and all that? This game is about philosophy. You're gonna hear the word philosophy a lot. Like, Tatsuya wants to figure out what his philosophy in life would be. So, you're gonna hear philosophy again and again. What is my philosophy? What philosophy do I, do I want to follow? Have I found the answer to my philosophy? It's okay. It's a, like, it's a, so, the Koryo games are very edgy games. Let's just put that out of the way. But, th that doesn't mean they're bad. I just think I prefer Koryo 1 over 2, like, by a lot. Ichiro Tanaka, yes, my favorite boss of all time. Um, okay, Kenzon. 
I'll be honest with you guys, I am not super well versed in Kenzan's story. But I do think, from what I know about it, the story is pretty decent. I like the story. Um, I do think the story is better than um, Ishin. Or at least, again, as far as I know. Because I did not like Ishin's story at all. I would almost put this... Okay, maybe that's harsh, but like... God, the ending to Ishian was so fucking dumb. I can't I can't believe how dumb it is. Okay, let me reenact the ending to you guys, okay? Protagonist meets final boss. Protagonist beats final boss. Protagonist says, Hey brother, have you ever considered using the power of love to change the country instead of all the fucking chaos and all the slaughter you've done? Final boss goes, Oh, the power of love. How did I not consider that? You're telling me a calculate like a calculating guy <laughs> did not think of that? It's like oh god, it it falls apart so hard. It's like Koryo two in that regard, and actually sort of like Koryo one, but it's like it's way dumber. And and then yeah, Jingo shows up because of course he does. Put it in D. No, like, I, I do like... I think I like the story of Ishin more than 5, so I'll keep it here. And then, yeah, Ishin and Kiwami actually removed the cutscene at the very end, after the credits, where, like, a dad with his son in the present time walks by the statue of uh, Sakamoto Ryoma. And I don't know what they say, but that's a, that's a scene that's not an Ishin Kiwami. Um, the guy who voices the dad is the voice of Nishitani. So maybe there's something that has to do with that. Yeah, rest in peace. He was a great man. Mm. I'm in the middle of Kiwami 2 and 3. Is Ishin worth playing before or after completing the main series? I would say after. Just finish the mainline series and then go go jump onto Ishin. Not because you need knowledge or anything, but you know. Um, priorities, I guess. Kenzon. What's the OST playing? It's not a Yakuza OST. It's not a game OST in general. I'm borrowing uh, audio from a website. Borrowing, by that I mean I subscribe to them. Um, yeah, the if we ever are gonna get Ishin, it's gonna uh, sorry Kenzon, it's gonna be changed heavily. They confirmed that already. Um, and yeah, that is a shame. Yeah, Kenzon sound like the soundtrack in general in all of the games is awesome. And we'll, we'll get to that. Anyway, we have like five minutes. Let's wrap this up before one hour passes since we started. Dead Souls! <laughs> Where do I put Dead Souls? Fuck! Guys, help me! <laughs> okay. Call me crazy. But I genuinely think this story is really fun. Like, it's just stupid fun. I like the story. Like, fun, but not as stupid as 4, in my opinion. It just, like, it does not get, it's it doesn't take itself self seriously at all. It's like, you know what, fuck it, zombies in Kamurocho. So it's not trying to be ambitious with anything. Um, Ryuji comes back, Majima's playable for the first time, and so is Ryuji. Um, you play as Akiyama first, and then you move on to Ma Majima, and then Ryuji, and then Kiryu comes back to save Haruka. Um, yeah, I respect that. I respect that a lot. Like, they, they said, you know what, again, just... Uh, <laughs> let's put zombies. Um, is it better than 6? It's very entertaining. Like, inter like, every time I play Dead Souls on stream, I just laugh with the chat. And in a way that's like, oh, look at these silly guys. In a zombie setting, for once. Yo, Kevin, thank you. I like it. It's it's very uh, unique, unique in a good way, in my opinion. 
Man, I can see the comments already. Fuck you, Leon. Above Yakuza 6, Koryo 2, Kenzan. Listen, this is a personal tier list right now, okay? You think 6 is better? Like, be my guest. Go ahead and make a tier list. Um, but, look, like, don't take this too seriously. Like, yeah, I, I do think the story is more entertaining than Yakuza 6. But, I'm not saying, fuck you, Yakuza 6 enjoyer. Dead Souls is better. That's not the intention here. I'm just saying, I enjoy the story of Dead Souls more. Because it's genuinely entertaining, in my opinion. S for having civilians respect care you, see? <laughs> thank you, Descendant, thank you. Actually, fuck it. No, 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 no. No. Streets of Kamurocho. I mean... There's no story here, so... <laughs> Lost Paradise. Okay, the grind aside... If we're not talking about the grind with Lost Paradise... There is a really cool story here, in my opinion. I like Lost Paradise a lot. So, if you never watched a uh, Hokuto no Ken episode or read the manga... You don't need to do that. I, I played this game without, like, any knowledge of, uh, you know, Hokuto. All I knew was, oh, Omae wa Shinderu. That's it. That's all I knew. I jumped into this game because, you know, it's like a collaboration between RGG and Hokuto. And I loved it. I did. Despite all its uh, downfalls. The story is probably the best thing about it. Um, there's a lot of really cool fights. There's a lot of cool characters. There's original characters that don't exist in... Um, Uh, I thought my phone was ringing. There's a lot of cool characters that don't exist in the actual manga. Um, and yeah, I thought they did a good job at, you know, making a brand new original story. Shout out to Nadai. I love that guy. And then, like a brawler story. Better than Shinoda. Are you guys with me? Yeah, Targa and Nadai. I love them. Tar- Tar- God, Targa is just... <laughs> Targa is, uh... Targa might genuinely be... Like, I don't know what to say about him. I don't want to spoil, but also, I did warn people about spoilers, I don't know. Yeah, Like a Brawler is a Yakuza 7 mod. Uh, the creator of the list put it here for some reason. Okay, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I think I would actually put it here. What about you guys? Man, okay, so... There's a lot to say about this game. Ooh, that's a lot of S's. And there's also a lot of A. Okay, here's the thing. Here's my note about uh, Infinite Wealth. The game doesn't have the same emotional intensity as some of the other games, which might make people feel like there's no stakes when there still, there still are stakes in the story. It's just, you don't have characters fucking bawling their eyes out all the time and all that. Get re Yeah, get ready for the recency bias comments. You would think I would get that if I put that in S tier, which I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, th there's a lot to love about um, Infinite Wealth, don't get me wrong, but... Um, like I said a lot of times at this point, Infinite Wealth is what Lost Judgment is to Judgment. Like, the first game starts on a much, much stronger note. But then Infinite Wealth, or the second game, there, there is a good story there, but it doesn't hit the same. Um, I've seen people say, like, it's Yakuza 5 levels of inconsistent inconsistency in writing. But, like, come on, Yakuza 5 is a special tier. A lot of actions in Infinite Wealth made sense. The only things I would say, like, the only things I had a problem with in, in this game was one whole character. I'm not gonna say too much, but I had a problem with AG. okay? I feel like they didn't know what to do with AG. They just kind of... They yakuza fived him, if you will. I, yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. They yakuza fived him. Um, I, I think AG is my major problem. Like... What else is there? 
maybe that there's no emotional intensity. But, like, that's not necessarily a problem to me. Because, like, they don't have to make every single ending a, like a crying fest. And in that sense, I do respect, you know, Infinite Wealth. Because we just got that with Gaiden. I think Gaiden did that very well. They didn't need to do that again. Um... <laughs> it seems like most of us agree about uh, AG. Yeah. I feel like a lot of it also has to do with the fact that each one was like, oh, I can, I guess I can go meet my mom, but like, I don't really care about her at this point. He didn't say that exactly, but he basically said that. In his words, he said, um, he was like, oh, she's just a woman that my boss loved. Nothing more. Having said that, though, there is an emotional scene between the two. And I love that scene. Yamai. I've seen a take saying Yamai got his development out of nowhere. And I don't agree with that. If you pay attention to his earlier scenes, you could tell. He's the same guy you see later. Because, like, the way he took interest in Tomizawa just kind of... Abandoning him, basically. I love that. You do see the same Yamai, you know, that you end up seeing later. Bro, just thank... Thank her for giving... Yeah. <laughs> um... Where the hell is the florist? Guys, just say goodbye to him. He's not coming back anymore. Hmm... But yeah, I feel like this is a good placement for it. Again, it doesn't mean Infinite Wealth is a bad game. I mean, Lost Judgment arguably has the inferior story to Judgment. But guess what? People put it in S tier, generally speaking, because the gameplay is so fucking good. It's so satisfying. And that's that's good enough. That's good enough. And this is just a story tier list right now, so don't forget that. Anyway, let's reset this and move on to the next criteria. The gameplay ranking. Now... I have to put this stuff again. Give me uno moment. Mm -mm -mm. Where is the Ayoi? Who? Ending felt rushed to me. Yeah. The, the, the flow of the story for the most part felt okay to me. Until, yeah, the end. Okay. Their gameplay ranking. Oh, I have to change that every time. God damn it. Damn it. I just got an email from Best Buy. Do you guys use Best Buy? I never do. I don't even know why I have emails from them. Hey, yo, Leon, is that still swelling? Yes, it is, buddy. How you doing? Actually, hold on. I'm gonna turn on the AC. It's getting a little hot here. Guys, don't look, okay? Cover your eyes. Okay. We ready to do this or what? So, gameplay ranking. We're gonna start from the bottom again. Now, call me crazy, but Yakuza 1 Original, once again, is an A tier. I love replaying this game. It never gets old. Despite being the very first game in the franchise. Um, call me crazy again. But I enjoy playing Yakuza 1 more than 2. I love it. I really do. Yakuza, the problem with Yakuza 2, yes, the gameplay is satisfying, but to unlock a lot of the cool stuff, you have to really go out of your way. It's such a pain if you were to, you know, replay the game. 
Call me crazy. I might be cra- I might- I might be uh, kooky, if you will, if you, if you catch my drift. But unlocking stuff in 2 was so fucking bad. I hated that so much. Um, and because of that, it makes me not want to play the game. Um, if you want, like, the extra heat bars, you have to, like... Do we need to do this, the song and dance again, guys? You know, you know where this is gonna go. Yeah, go to Bangladesh. Uh, meet... <laughs> Just... You, you guys get the idea. Yeah, this is the perfect time for that emote that I added, Leoning. Let me play a different song. Ah, <sighs> okay. Okay, actually, hold on, hold on. Gameplay should not cover just the combat. It's like general uh, gameplay. Like, um... Like, uh, the combat, the navigation, exploration... Unlocking stuff, you know, all of that. Yeah, New Game Plus, Yakuza 2 is way better than 1. And actually, I, I w this should have been later, but because of that, the same problem is in Lost Paradise. Playing this game on a fresh playthrough is brutal. Brutal. But if you have New Game Plus, beautiful. Beautiful. This feels like the type of music that would be on Nelly Island. Maybe I'm from Palikana. But yeah, uh, I think Lost Paradise is worse than 2 in that regard. Holy shit. Um, actually, no, 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 that's a bit harsh. There's some cool things to do in this game, but... Oh, the grind. <laughs> oh, the grind. <laughs> okay, Yakuza 3. I feel like a lot of chat would put this in D. Blakuza! Fuck this game! But I do like the gameplay of 3. I do. It's not perfect, by any stretch of the imagination. But... It's better than people give it credit for. Yeah, wall bounding is, f is fun in 3. Um, I think B is a good spot. Yeah, I think B is good as well. My main problem with 3's combat, I think, is like how easy it is to get stun locked and I guess just the limited amount of moves you have compared to the, to the other games it somehow feels more limited than Yakuza 1 and that's saying something you like objectively you have more moves than 3 but a lot of them you can't use at least not normally 3 is also a game like one of the only games in the franchise where to be efficient you have to be efficient basically but to be efficient you have to whiff attacks. That's insane. It's absolutely insane. Um, yeah, like, you have to play 3 in a very specific way at times. But despite that, I do enjoy the combat in this game. I don't think it's the worst. Building heat was annoying. How was it? And then we have Yakuza okay, Yark 4. Honestly, S tier. Honestly, S tier. Yeah, story is dog shit, but holy shit, the gameplay is so fun. Even if you start fresh, no problem. No, guess why? Start fresh. Get through the story a little bit. Get some XP. Guess what? Go to the upgrade menu. Unlock anything you want. Anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> it's so good. That fact alone makes 4 so, so much fun to replay. Every single time. It does not overstay its welcome. It doesn't restrict you in, like, unfun ways. It's like, oh, you got six orb uh, orbs? Well, guess what? Unlock anything. Just go for it. Best upgrade system, hands down. So, yeah. Yakuza 4 would be here for me. Also, yeah, Akiyama in Yakuza 4. Oh, my God. Night and day from Yakuza 5. Akiyama and Yakuza 5 was fucking murdered. Butchered. It's insane. Um, you can't do the same crazy wall bounds you could do with him in 4. Uh, Tanimura, despite... You know, a lot of criticism I see about him. In my opinion, is way better than Shinara to play as. Tanimura is insanely fun. Uh, that parry is so good. Uh, when you get cornered, you can rely on that parry to like... 
uh, bump enemies into the wall. Especially if you can't knock them down normally. Saijima is really fun to play, despite being inferior to the Yakuza 5 version, technically. You know, Kiryu in this game, despite 5 giving him more tools, is better to play in my opinion. Call me crazy again, but that red heat ability that Kiryu has on 5 is practically useless. The only instance where you, you get some use out of it is like huge crowd fights. Which is like, what, one fight in the story? Um, against like the Toja clan in the end of his part. Yeah, there it's decent. Otherwise, like, it's good, but... Five gave everyone more moves, but they feel less fluid. Absolutely, yes. A oh god, the banding throw spam. <laughs> Curious 2 OP and 5. Like. By the way, keep in mind, this is a gameplay ranking, not just combat. I I would be generous to put 5 here. This game is fucking atrocious to replay. It's not even funny. Like, in, if you were to ask me, hey Leon, replay this ga Yakuza game. Sure, I'll replay that game. Not 5, though. I hate 5. You're trolling. What makes you think I'm trolling? This is a personal tier list, if you didn't notice. Why do you think 4 has the best game mechanic? You have to be more specific than that. Uh... The thing about Yakuza 5, guys... If you want to finish the training, you have to really go out of your way. Kind of like Yakuza 2. Oh, you got to level 20? Okay, there's like a, a limit... What was it called? A breakthrough? Go fight two Kamakis at once. Okay? That fight... With Akiyama and Shinada... Is one of the worst fights in the whole franchise. You can't use heat actions for some godforsaken reason. It's just so tedious. It is. Better put personal on text so everyone knows. Even if I put personal, people can't read. That's a fact. Oh, Leon, what game are you playing? The, the title is in the... The name is in the title. Yakuza 5 gives you more tools, technically, but a lot of them are useless. Case in point. Actually, wait, wait, let me pull up the Yakuza 5 word document now. Now is the time. Alright, I have two pages, guys. Are you ready to go through this? You want an explanation? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Now keep in mind, this is a personal tier list at the moment. We did the objective one earlier, which had Yakuza 5 in A tier. But for me personally, Yakuza 5 is probably my least favorite game to replay. It's not a bad game, but replaying this game is an absolute chore. Okay. <laughs> God, do we do this? Yeah, the Leon Yakuza 5 info dump. All right, let's start. An insane increase of in-game dialogue in an era of unskippable in-game dialogue. A lot of it thinly spread out when it could be said in a few sentences. A notable increase in cinematic storytelling and a focus on it compared to previous games. In a way, the beginning of that. Older games, in-game dialogue usually had less. Now, the, the reason I don't have much of a problem with... Uh, Say, for example, Yakuza 7, which has a lot of... Maybe not a lot of, but it has info dumps. A lot of long ones. You can just skip those. You can't do that with Yakuza 5. And you might be saying, okay, Leon, what about Yakuza 4? I'll tell you, Yakuza 4, yes, you do have, like, a lot of dialogue. But guess what? It doesn't last for a fucking whole year. There's that. Um, okay, another point. One of the least replayable Yakuza games, like I said, due to the aforementioned point, in addition to a point soon to be mentioned. The pacing of the story is all over the place. Most notably with Saijima, where you get the chance to free roam in the purest sense only in his final chapter, which is also the chapter in which you finally get to see the city assigned to him. The final chapter! One chapter for the city! Okay? The first two chapters are spent in prison, and the third one is dedicated mostly to a side story. With me so far? Okay. 
Haruka sharing a part with Akiyama is very telling of how shoehorned Akiyama is. Akiyama's main purpose in the story is to protect Haruka and be assigned a villain, aka Kanai. And he has no development for himself. He's just there to be there. <laughs> okay. Now, bear with me. One tutorial of Haruka's side gigs would have been enough. But no! You get forced to sit through, like, three of them. Oh, what's that? You like, uh, what's it called? Konan, Janai, whatever? Okay, let's have you hear that three times in the story. Never mind, you know, everything else you have to do with the side gigs if you want to complete them. With me so far? Okay. Akiyama having no side story when every other character does likely indicates that he was possibly a late addition or at the very least a unnecessary addition. Okay. <laughs> With me so far? Good. Shinada has one of the better arcs of the game. Almost feeling like a completely detached spin-off. Until it falls apart at the very end when they try to connect his arc to the main story and he's sent to stop Baba, a supporting character from Saijima's story, when there's nothing directly connecting the two of them. And instead, Saijima gets to face Majima, who was already shoehorned into the story when he didn't need to be. Okay? With the surprise twist of being Park's ex-husband being the main link that ties him into the story? So, because Saijima can't be at two places at once, someone has to take care of one of them, either Baba or Saijima. And that's why probably Shinada existed at the finale. Okay? <laughs> okay, and now a big one for me. Restrictive premium adventure and completion save. Not fixed in the remaster, any substories and side activities done will have to be reset. That is so incredible. That is so fucking bad. I don't know why they did that. And the fact that they didn't fix that in the remaster either, like why? Just why? Oh, by the way, I didn't finish the first page. <laughs> But the whole premium adventure and completion save is a huge fucking slog for me. Like, come on. Every single Yakuza game ha That's almost as bad as Gaiden not having a new game plus. Anyway. There is a direct downgrade in a minigame like IF8. You need to play each character like 10 times to get everything out of it. The worst part is that most of those times you play through the exact same level with no change whatsoever. Yakuza 3 and 4 did IF much better. Much, much better. With all of the matches basically being boss fights that had gimmicks to them that made them different from the actual boss fights. Yakuza 5 had the most lazy IF by far, and it's not even a competition. The literal definition of quantity over quality. Even Guidance Single Coliseum match, IF, you know, the robot bosses thing, was more fun to play through because it was a short trip down memory lane. And you didn't have to play it 20, 50 times. Okay? <laughs> With me so far? We're still on the first page, by the way. What's IF? Inner Fighter. You know the VR machine that Kiryu and uh, the others play? Th that's basically what it is. Okay. By the way, thank you, Rolo. You reminded me of another thing. It's very easy to fuck up your completion in Yakuza 5. Say, for example, you sell something you have no idea is something you, you know, you can obtain, other, uh, like, normally. Well, guess what? You have to redo the whole completion thing. Like... <laughs> okay. The upgrade system... So we're still talking about gameplay, so this is all relevant. You guys... Oh, Leon, why'd you put the Yakuza 5 in... I'm telling you exactly why I put Yakuza 5 in D right now. So, if you left, that's on you. Don't come back later and be like, oh, Leon... If you're not listening right now, then fuck off. The upgrade system is a massive downgrade from Yakuza 4. Yakuza 4 gave the freedom for you to pick any ability you want, whenever you wanted, provided some abilities have prerequisites. Yakuza 5 went back to the Yakuza 1 to 3 upgrade system, where you might have to get two or three abilities you don't care about in order to get that one ability that truly makes a difference. The point of sequels is to improve, and this is one of the many things that is a direct downgrade. Like... Uh, <laughs> what happened there? Okay. Victory Road has to be the most useless and tedious addition ever made to the franchise. Hey guys, let's take the Underground Coliseum and make it so that you have to unlock it with each character. 
and every character's progression is separate, and that's infinitely more painful for five in particular, given how tedious the Coliseum is. All the Coliseum enemies have Kamaki's knockback for no reason, and the only thing it does to the only thing it does is make all the fights more annoying to go through. <laughs> we just got to the second page, so bear with me. The weapon skill system is yet another extremely useless addition. Or at least it is with how Yakuza 5 handled that. If I remember right, a character won't be able to use a crowbar, a fucking crowbar, because he's not leveled enough in blunt weapons or some shit. I'd understand if it was like nunchucks or something. But this is a blunt weapon, a, a stick! Like, <laughs> what happened there? Side, same thing with the stun guns. You can't use tasers with Saijima from the get-go when you could do that in Yakuza 4. Alright, now let's move on to some of the combat stuff. Combat is great, but far from perfect, especially in comparison to later games and previous games. Yakuza 4. Yakuza 4 plays way better. Akiyama, despite getting more moves to work with in Yakuza 5, is also countered often in 5 by enemies. Wall banding strats that highlight his speed like no other character are no longer an option. Akiyama's air attacks, much like a lot of the mechanics that would come up later in the series, only work on non-boss enemies. Coliseum enemies, all having Kamaki's knockback, makes no sense and is one of the worst gameplay design choices ever made. This makes a character as speedy as Akiyama not so fun to play. <laughs> Guys, we, we still have a bit to go through. Stay with me here. <laughs> uh... I can't believe I actually decided to read all of this on stream. But you guys are like, oh, Leon, uh, Yakuza 5 in detail. I'm trying to explain where I'm coming from here. Kiryu's rage mechanic, having a few selection of attacks, okay, half of them easily blocked by even the common enemy, makes it a half-baked mechanic where only the, re where the only real perk, besides deflecting attacks, is being able to grab through anyone's guard. That's it. Saijima's rush combos have their guard-breaking properties altered from how they worked in the Yakuza 4. So, hold on. The wording of this is kind of weird. Saijima's rush combos having their guard-breaking properties altered from how they worked in the Yakuza 4 works against it, and only unnecessarily makes it take an extra step. So I think what I was talking about here is like, when you do the rush combo as Saijima in Yakuza 4, it takes less attacks for you to break the guard of an enemy, but in 5, it takes more attacks for you, for you to break the guard of an enemy. So that's what I mean when I say Saijima in 4 sort of feels better to play. Okay. Secret abilities for characters where you need to do well-timed button presses with rush combos to get things like hyper armor or break through the enemy guard feels like unnecessary padding abilities that could have been something more consistent and more useful. Now for the last point, I know you guys are like, Oh, please, Leon, give us like five more pages, but that's it. Shinada's combat. Shinada's combat is a plus with how different it feels from the others, but there's many drawbacks. He lacks decent crowd control options, he's very weapon focused, and the one counter you'll learn for, for him is one of the worst in the franchise, because it chains into a grab, and even the common enemy in this game can just instantly break out of it. Training should reward you with things you want to use, and, you know, it should give you overpowered abilities because you worked for it. Um, it. It shouldn't be something they're afraid to do, like giving you, you know, useful abilities. But it feels like they were hesitant with Shinada. Look at Saijima's counter! It fucking breaks all the fights! And that's the last thing that, that I wrote. Thank you guys for coming to my TED Talk. Now do you understand why I put this here? <laughs> Exactly, Itzy. Yes. See, I explained all of this, but you know, you know for a fact some dipshit is gonna come in like five minutes in, and he's like gonna be like, "Oh, Leon, why is this indeed here?" <laughs> That's basically what I think about five. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't understand understand what I was talking about, then maybe that's a comprehension issue, but I thought I was very clear. Leon, I missed all of that. Read it again. 
See, opinions are one thing. But was I unclear about anything? Leon, why is he because of 5 and T tier? Ugh. Okay, well, that's Yakuza 5. Well, let's just move on. Um, Yakuza 6, where is it? Uh, it's very rough. The, the combat is very rough. Okay. It's missing a very basic thing like the stump. But despite that, replaying this game is not bad. Not nearly as bad as Yakuza 5. This was the start of being able to skip, like, all the, you know, all the in-game dialogue, everything. Um, and that's huge. That's amazing for replayability. Leon, why is... <laughs> God damn it. Um, five is a game I can understand why it could be someone's favorite, and I can see why it would be someone's least favorite. Yeah. Same. By the way, I... <laughs> I don't know how I seem just now talking about Yakuza 5, but, I, like, that was meant to be half banter, by the way. But I do think the points that I presented are things that I do consider annoying about the game, personally. But I also do understand why someone would put this in S tier. I'm not, like, absolutely brain dead that I would say, Oh, fuck you for liking 5. I do understand. But for me, for me personally, 5 is like... If I, if I were to choose a game to replay, I would not pick 5. Um... Yeah, I was considering cutting D tier, honestly, because a lot of these games are decent to, you know, play. They're all fun. Um... <laughs> Leon, you need to make a rant video in Yakuza 5. No. I feel like I got enough haters from that. <laughs> there are people who unironically hate me just because I put some, like, a game they love in some place that they wouldn't put. Hell, just, just what, uh, last video? The review video? Someone watched the video and for some reason thought that I gave the story of, of Infinite Wealth a perfect score when I didn't. And they were like, come on, that's the worst story in the past 10 years or something like that. Which, like, the past 10 that's not saying much in my opinion. A lot of the stories in the past 10 years are decent. So, I mean, if you think it's the worst, sure, but like... That's an opinion. <laughs> Crazy, I know. Um, yeah, I put, I didn't put Infinite Wealth in S tier for a reason. I do think it's a good story, but I don't think it's like groundbreaking. Um, when are you gonna hundred percent Yakuza Five, dude? I don't hundred percent any of the Yakuza games. You want me to do that for five? Okay, so Yakuza Six. Am I crazy for... Actually, wait. Where is Kiwami 2? Am I crazy for enjoying 6 combat more than Kiwami 2? The dropkick does wonders, dude. I swear to god. That dropkick is insane. Mm. Uh... Eight story lacks something that makes seven or six. yeah, that's basically what I think as well. Kiwami 2 he's at heat actions make it so much better than six. Here's one downside to Kiwami 2's combat for me. Some heat actions that you had by default, for absolutely no reason, you had to unlock. I'll give you one example. You know that like the insane punches, like the Hokuto kind of heat action. Uh, where, you know, you have to press square triangle circles, square triangle circle. If you wanted that in Kiwami 2, you actually had to spend so much time working for it, for no reason. I didn't like that at all. It's just the whole, you know, Yakuza 2 problem. Dragon Flurry, I guess you can call it, yeah. Um... It's Kiwami 2. It has the same problem as 2, where you have to just really go out of your way to unlock some of the best moves. Also, the goons in Kiwami 2 have more health than bosses. Or at least I felt that way. Which is weird. Uh, why is Yakuza 3 higher than most, considering the meme of Lakuza? 
I think Yakuza 3 gets more hate than it deserves because people don't play the game the way the game wants the, them to play it, if that makes sense. They will just spam one combo. That's it. You could dodge behind enemies, you could grab them whenever possible. You have a limit on the grabs, but if you unlock the Kamaki, Kamaki counters as well, you have more tools to deal with bosses. And also making use of the banding throws in 3 in particular, like, there's more importance to it. It's probably not a casual, friendly game, but it's it's a good game. Um, also, if you want to unlock like the Kamaki moves, for example, it's way easier than two and Kiwami two. You go talk to Kamaki. He's gonna tell you to talk to his three students, and that's it. Um. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. By the way, keep in mind, uh, this is not just about the combat, it's about the general game, replaying the game, everything, everything in between. Um, the side content in 6, in my opinion, is super weak. But like, as a game that you replay, I think I'd like to replay this more than Kiwami 2. Mm. Bro, the soundtrack makes me feel like I'm a monk now. Maybe you are. Horror story is that good? <laughs> this is the gameplay ranking. But yeah, the story of 4 is that good. Okay, let's move on. Um... What do we have next? Where's Jug? Oh, there's Jugnut. Um. Okay, honestly, the the gameplay of this game is not its strongest point, especially after we got Lost Judgment and you know, Gaiden and all that. Like, the tailing. Oh my! I actually have no problem with the tailing, but but then I realized if you were to replay this game, you have to put up with the tailing every single time, and you can't skip it. That, like, oh god. <laughs> it does have some of the early Dragon Engine issues as well, yeah. Um, I think I actually prefer replaying 3 over Judgment. Actually, wait, wait, wait. No, no, god. This feels so good. Okay, maybe, maybe that's good, actually. Like, the combat is better in Judgment compared to 6, but also, replaying 6 is way better than Judgment. By the way, the speed run for Judgment, to give you an idea, is like, what was it again? 4 hours? 5 hours? And for 6, it's what, 2 hours? To give you an idea. Um, judgment has a lot of filler, and it also has a lot of tailing. And those two take up most of the playtime, if you were to, you know, replay the game and skip the story. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good game still. Oh, oh my god, the Kahan gang. You guys had to remind me. <laughs> god, I hate the Kahan gang so much, man. I hate Kim. I hate Kim so much. Um, it needs to be lower. <laughs> okay, guys, how about, how about this? Man, it feels so cursed putting this below 6. But then again, this is not just a combat. For those watching, like, the VOD or anything, this is not just a combat. This is combat, replayability, you know, anything in the game that's fun to do. Replayability is huge for me, as a streamer. Um... Extracts? Uh, they were in this game, but they were not potion- No, wait, 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 wait. They were in this game. They were. Mortal Wounds? <laughs> You know, I, I think I said this before, but I was surprised to find out that people hated Mortal Wounds. I didn't mind them personally, but I but I do understand why people hate those. It's a chore having to, assuming you don't have a med kit, you have to go find one. Um, how do you guys feel about the Mortal Wounds? Why is Vanilla, vanilla 2 below 1, missed halfway? 
I just enjoy replaying uh, OG1 over 2. Because, like, OG1 is very straightforward. Um, you can actually get the Kumaki moves while doing the story, seamlessly. But in 2, you have to go out of your way. At least, I, I think you do. Um, and also, if you want to get the extra heat bars, you also have to kind of go out of your way. With OG1, whenever you go to Purgatory, just drop by Kamaki. Indifferent. Mortal Wounds are nice because it makes you think more. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I didn't mind the uh, Mortal... They definitely added like a sense of threat for the guns. And just, you know, the Mortal Attacks. But yeah, I think I would put this here. Um, Yakuza 0. Okay, th this is a really fun game to replay, but replayability is actually on par with Yakuza 5 in terms of, you know, how long it is. So... I feel like this is going to piss off people. <laughs> God, I don't know. Yaka zero S tier or nothing. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> okay, guys, is is this gonna make you feel better? Look up here, okay? That's just the gameplay ranking. Later on, we're gonna have a general subjective um, ranking. So zero is gonna go up. Don't worry. But I'm talking about the gameplay specifically. Yeah, it has a similar problem to Yakuza 5, where you can't skip some of the dialogue, but not all of it. Uh, where was it? Yeah, that's why 4 is an S. For those who... Guys, just to let you know again, the reason, like, you're seeing such a cursed rating right now is because I'm purely ranking the gameplay right now. That's it. Just the gameplay. Nothing else. Not the story. Nothing. That's... Well, we rated the story already, but... No new game plus on Legend is BS. Yeah. I actually used to not mind that because, like, I saw it as a challenge. But when you go back to the game, yeah, that definitely is annoying. Make the text bigger. Yeah, you're right. Is that visible enough now? <laughs> okay. I'll be honest with you guys. I think I would put zero here. In terms of, again, just replaying the game. Um, I guess the side con- but like... I'll be honest with you guys, I don't care for the side content. For the most part. Like... Oh, hostess clubs, don't care. The batting cage, don't care. The gambling stuff, don't care. Bowling, don't care. There's very few side content that I actually care about. Um... You know what? Let me... I almost want to rename the title to Replayability Ranking. <laughs> I am literally shaking. Hey, I just arrived. Why is Yakuza 4 an S tier? I can't read the green text, by the way. That's just how it is. Mm. It's a personal tier list, guys. Calm down. What's a personal tier list? Mm. Man, I, I'm having a... an existential crisis right now, actually. <laughs> anyway. 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 Why is this so tough? Okay, no. Let's put that there. Um, where were we? Yakuza like a dragon. Okay. Maybe if I rank this game, you guys are going to be more understanding of every other ranking. But replaying this game on a fresh save is rough, I think. Um, I'm not a, not a huge fan. Whenever I replay this game, I put this. I use New Game Plus. That's why I'm pretty mad about 
infinite wealth not having new game plus by default. Might as well make it replayability. Do we just do that? What do you guys think? I feel like it might be on. Actually, no, I don't think I would change much here. Let's do that. Okay, let me make the text. I, f I feel like I'm going to be very comfortable if I do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, give me one moment, guys. Uh, in the meantime, you can go take a pee-pee or a poo-poo. And I'm not going to tell on you. Okay. Replayability ranking. I feel like this is going to be very confusing for people who skip forward. They're like, wait, where's the gameplay ranking? Guys, if you're watching this, we're changing the title. But that's all, just the title. To make it more consistent. I, yeah, I do feel like gameplay ranking and then ranking the games in general is a bit redundant. Um... Let's put that over there. I really don't like the gameplay of 7. That's fine. We all can have opinions. I respect that. Guy, even... One of you could say fuck Yakuza 0 right now. And I would be like... You go, King. Okay. Here we go! Okay, so if you're watching this, like, clean, uh, we made a, a change of the title just to kind of make it more consistent, and so I don't feel as awkward about all of this. Um, I would put zero here. So, if you don't know what replayability ranking means, let me explain it real quick. I replay these games a lot, right? Or at least most of them. Um, and how replayable they are is a huge deal to me. By replayability, I mean going back and, you know, doing a fresh playthrough just to revisit the game. Yakuza 4 is one of the most, if not, I mean, it's the most replayable game here right now. It's so easy to get into and just jump into and beat the game without issues. And then OG1 is that next for me. Um, Yakuza 3 is that. 6, zero, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, with, Z with 5 being, like, the one game I that I prefer not to revisit because it's so, um... It it's just so tedious. Um, because, like, on average it would take me, like, an 8-hour stream. 8 to 10 hours, depending. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Um... That's a better title. I like 5, but you couldn't pay me to replay it. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I changed the title. So, let's see. Yakuza Dead Souls. Yakuza Dead Souls is a very replayable game, in my, in my opinion. Even if you start fresh, you don't have to, like, play New Game Plus. Just jump in, you miss Dead Souls, jump in, pick a difficulty, and boom. You'll, you'll be good to go. It's actually insane how easygoing this game is. You would think, you know, you need to, like, grind for weapons and whatnot. But that's an Ishian problem. <laughs> um, I think this game is bru- well, actually, wait. I think both Asian games are a bit brutal to replay. Um, my first playthrough of OG Asian, I hated the game, honestly. I didn't like it at all. Though that was also partly my fault, because I had no idea upgrading your weapons was such a huge deal. But it is. Like, you basically need to stop and grind for weapons. Um, I think my first playthrough was on hard as well, so there's that. Also, this game gives you 40 inventory slots and surprisingly you would think wow that's a lot because like coming off of previous games you have what 20 this game gives you double and despite the double increase you still run through the heels really fast it's it's actually insane um oh yeah um i would not want to replay these two honestly like Especially not the fresh new game. 
Um. Kenzon. You know, Kenzon is not a bad game to replay at all. Assuming you know what to do as well, it's not a bad game at all to replay. Um. I would actually probably put it, put it here. Because. Uh, in the Sabathon that I did before Infinite Wealth, um, I went into the game... Like, I, I barely know anything about Kenzon. I've beat the game on stream before, but that was such a long time ago. So I just jumped into it, and it was fine. It, like, it, it wasn't uh, tedious at all. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. <sighs> right. Kurohio. N not the worst both Kurohio 1 and 2. I think Kurohio 1 is better to replay. But like... Uh, hmm. The main problem, problem is that there's a lot of like going around and talking to people before you actually do an objective. Um, but like... They're short games, so it's not a big deal. Alright. How did I... We still have Kiwami 1 here, and I put Kiwami 2 on the list. Kiwami 1 is surprisingly not that bad to replay. You would think, oh, you know, Kiwami this and that, but it's not that bad to replay. You could start fresh. Actually, no, wait. If I remember right, I did a speedrun... Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I just remembered some. I, I unlocked a memory, if you will. Kiwami 2 is much more replayable than OG 2. Because Purely because of how much you can skip compared to OG 2. Um, there's a stream that I did, I think a month or two ago. I love Kiwami 2. Why so much hate? There's no hate here. In fact, I'm just about to praise it. Um... Also, but yeah, I also imagine having opinions. Anyway, uh, Kiwami 2. I did a stream a month or two ago trying to speedrun three Yakuza games. Um, so I speedrun one uh, Kiwami and two Kiwami and three. I beat all three of them in one stream in like three hours each, give or take. So, you know what? Kiwami 2 is pretty replayable. Especially now that we're not talking about the gameplay, we're talking about replayability. Um, so yeah, I think this is good. OG2 should have been SD for replayability. Mm. If you want a lot of the cool moves, you really have to work for it. Kiwami2 is like, oh, muscle soda? You win. Mmm... Also, the speedrun for OG2, from what I know, has a lot of RNG to it, if I remember right. I talked to Froob about this. He said OG2 relies on, like, the Knuckles or something like that, which spawn in a very specific street encounter spot, and you could either do one fight or, like, 30 fights. So, I, like, I don't, I, like, OG2 has... something. I would uh, prefer to replay Kiwami 2 if I were to replay one. Not saying Kiwami 2 is a better game, by the way. But yeah. In terms of just revisiting a game and finishing the game without much of a headache, I do think Kiwami 2 is easier to replay. Uh, this bloody binding and pay payback ring does massive damage for OG 2. Yeah, but uh, like you would have to be a hardcore fan of OG 2 to know that. I didn't know that until you just told me. Um, and I, like, I play Yakuza games for a living. Um, how are you going to rate Infinite Worlds replayability? That's a good question. We'll get to it when we reach the game. But for the time being, Gaiden. I am so sad Gaiden does not have New Game Plus. Like, that affects the whole deal a lot for me. Um, but if I remember right, in the Sabathon, we revisited Gaiden. You know, started the new save and, and all that. It wasn't bad. Actually, how long did I take with it? I don't remember. Is Infinite Wealth really the longest? 
There needs to be a debate about that. Speaking of, we are going to have a debate, a spoiler debate about Infinite Wealth soon. So just to wait for that. Such a great game and new, no, no new game plus, yeah. Man, the like the arguments I've seen for this, oh, it's a short game. Not really, it's like a 20 hour game, 20 to 30. Like, a game does not need to be <laughs> 500 hours for New Game Plus. Um, separate ways for Resident Evil 4 Remake has New Game Plus, and that's what, 10 hours on the first playthrough? So. Um, yeah, I think I prefer 3 overall when it comes to replaying. Would you guys pay for... I mean... <laughs> we would prefer not to re uh, pay for that, but... I put a lot into the arena, my save file was around 19 to 20. I think my first playthrough took 24 hours, give or take. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But I don't mind that. Okay. Lost Judgment. If I remember right, this game is way easier to revisit and replay. I mean, it doesn't have tailing. That's automatically better than, than the first judgment. But I think it's been a minute since I replayed this game, so I don't know. I think it's better. It's faster. I hate when people go with the admitted doing plus because not many people play it. Yeah, like... <laughs> how is that an argument? Oh, not many people play on easy. Let's get rid of easy. That's how stupid it sounds. Yeah, I do think Lost Judgment is a more pleasant experience uh, to revisit and replay. Um, there's no late load game feature, which is a huge deal for LJ. Hmm. I mean, for me, I never did... Yeah, like, I've seen a lot of people who s say they don't play New Game Plus, but they still do acknowledge that it's a shitty thing. But then I've seen people who... <laughs> They're just like, who cares about New Game Plus? Okay... Uh... <laughs> I'm not gonna rank these. Infinite Wealth. <laughs> um... Here's the one saving grace about Infinite Wealth, if you want to replay it. It's a Dragon Engine game, it means you can skip all the conversations. But... It's hard to rank this right now. But I feel like replaying 7 is gonna be easier than this. If we're not talking about New Game Plus, if we're talking about, like, fresh. I have an argument against the Yakuza 3 replayability, Lao Kalong. Yeah, it's a rough fight, but at least it's one fight. Um... Actually, wait, wait. If I really want to be fair. I don't know, I feel like this one can change a lot. Like, depending on uh, when I revisit this game later. 8 probably should- yeah. It's it's a, it's a rough one to rank right now. Do you have a 10-page essay to back up your claims? Oh, buddy. I have 200 pages. Um... Yeah, maybe it's best not to rank this at the moment. But if I were to put it somewhere, it probably would be here. Yeah, new game plus is payable. Like, man. <laughs> if we account for the fact that we're not doing new game plus, because, you know, it's a DLC. Oh, God, this is... Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, one thing that I noticed about Infinite Wealth compared to 7, a lot of the time in the story, like, story fights, I noticed, like, you didn't really have to stop and grind. Or was that just me? Maybe until, like, what, chapter 7? 
Because, like, if you're underleveled by one, le two levels, it doesn't matter, really. You can still get through the fight just fine. Unlike 7, I feel like in 7, it's a bit more brutal. Hey, Leon just tuned into the stream. What do you mean by re replayability? By replayability, we mean going back and replaying the game and how pleasant of an experience that is for me. Kiryu was on the level by 5. Y yeah, the difficulty spikes in 7 are way more noticeable than Infinite Wealth, in my experience at least. Because like 7, if you don't stop and grind for like a couple hours at, at a certain point, you just can't progress. But in Infinite Wealth, I feel like it's kind of... Op maybe optional is not quite it, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I felt a bit overleveled by just going through the dungeons, like one or th yeah, that's what I mean. Eight gives you a lot of bo yeah, that as well. Are you gonna do the gameplay ranking? Uh, we. So this was called the gameplay ranking, but because I felt like I was talking a lot about replayability, um, you know, I just renamed that. Hmm. Grinding is better than 8. Hard disagree. Infinite Wealth felt more grindy to... Really? Interesting. Okay, let me ask chat this. You just say yes or, yes or no. Was Infinite Wealth more grindy than 7? I'm curious to see what chat thinks. Eight has so many boost and job XP. Mm. Oh, holy shit! That's a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I expected to see like 50-50 maybe, but XP yes, money no. Seven was so much more grindy. You know, I really appreciate that in, in Infinite Wealth they kind of cut down on like the money requirements. One part, they were like, yo, give us $30. And then the next one, it's like, yo, give us $10,000. And at that point of the game, you had like $100,000. So it wasn't a big deal. I really appreciate that. Sleep well, Rolo. Overleveled at 52. Mm. Grinding job XP in 7 was cringe. <laughs> I have no idea why, but whenever people use cringe to describe something, it just makes me laugh. The word, funny, funny word. Do we have the dice of cringe emote? I think we do, right? I think we do. Yeah, 8 does tell you what the level you need to be. That's huge. I like that. Um, I felt like money is a constant issue in 8. I see. 500k dollar bonus. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, this was the replayability ranking. We still have two more rankings. And oh boy, are they a doozy. So, the soundtrack ranking. <laughs> you gonna play? No, this is just a tier list stream. I'm trying to take it easy after, you know, beating Infinite Wealth. Um, and, uh, what's it called? Doing the review, but I just can't help myself. Um, all S tier. RGG Online S tier. <laughs> it's funny because RGG Online just reuses soundtracks from all the games. Okay, hold on. Let's reset. One and a two and a three. Actually, wait, no. D tier. Yeah, for this one... We probably should just get rid of D tier and C tier. S A B C D uh, Wait, 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 wait. No. We don't need the D tier. Z. 
Is that good enough? C is the lowest rank. Is it possible to put online the main line? In? Hmm. Well, but Yakuza 4 up top simply because of funny. Man, 4 has so many. Like, all the games have so many bangers. Yo, Danny. Welcome, buddy. Leon is not gonna put 5 on S tier no matter what. <laughs> hey! Who do you think am I? A Yakuza 5 hater? Please. Okay, OG won. No contest. Funk goes on is like the Yakuza track. It's so iconic. And that's one track. Just one track. <laughs> um, Funk goes on, Son of a Gun, ID, Scarlet Scar, Receive You the Prototype, um, For Whose Sake, Pray Me. Oh, there, there's so many tracks in this game that are just so good. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> enough said. Now, OG2. Pretty good soundtrack. But I think I prefer OG1. So, 2 has... Um, I actually am not the best with the names. Evil itself, Beast itself... As a man, as a brother. Oh, North... Oh, God. I love North Menace. It's so good. It's a shame that they didn't bring that in Kiwami 2. North Menace is so good. North Menace. I love North Menace. Blockhead Boy. The Grudge. West Insanity. Yakuza 3. Don't burn me, chat, please. So, there's Fly. I love Fly. I love, uh, what's it called? Lyricism by Tears? Th those two are amazing. Fly and... L Every time I try to say that song. L Lyricism by Tears. That's how you say it, right? More Huge is okay. S oh, s oh God. Soundstorm. N now you're talking. Oh, shit. <laughs> Ah! Soundstorm. Oh, god damn it. Why did you mention that? <laughs> Soundstorm. I'm not a fan of the street battle themes for this one, except for Ryukyu Humming. I love Ryukyu Humming. Re Ogre has returned, yeah. <laughs> okay. Call me crazy, but... Soundstorm alone is just... Oh, fly. Oh yeah, hear, in, hear this in the game. That's a good track. Hear this in the game. You need multiple S-tier layers. <laughs> okay guys, how about this? How about this? Um... I, I think I would put it like this. So nothing is bad, basically. <laughs> um... What do we have? Oh, Yakuza 4. Let's see. Rebellions, uh, Speedstar, Massifier, um, Infinite Handcuffs. The myth, I'm not a big fan. It's okay, but it's like... For all, oh, for all, oh God, for faith. <laughs> Solit oh, solitude, oh yeah. Um, wh what's the Kyuchi's theme called? It's, it's... Smile venomously. Ooh, all my pride. Oh man, it's such a good soundtrack. <laughs> Receive and bite you, one of the better Majima tracks. Whiskey, oh, Whiskey and Rhapsody, Nervousness. Woo! What do you mean Yakuza 2 is only 2 SS? Yeah. Yeah, Nair Steam is really good. Yeah, there's a lot of good tracks in 4. Um, materi oh yeah, Material Delight is good. But man, Solitude? And then, uh, what? what's the low-key Solitude theme called? Obscure or something? I love that too. 
Okay, Yakuza 5. Let's see. Hailstorm. <laughs> God damn it. My favorite street battle theme by far is Shinada's theme. It's ama- like, what's it called? Uh, what a Funcastic Hit? What a Funcastic Hit. I love that track so much. Uh, the the rest of the th battles, street battle themes, they're okay. But Shinada's battle theme? Oh. I believe in you. Victory Road. No, thank you. <laughs> Receive and slash you. Uh, what's Kanai's theme called? The second one. Uh, the last one. I love that one so much. The place I used to be. Battle for the dream. Full scale offensive. I think my favorite tracks from 5 are Extermination. Extermination. Uh, each of our dreams, even though it's a credit theme. I love that track. Dynamic and Magnificent and the rematch. I love those so much. Um... There's a lot of good tracks in this game. Whew, okay. Yakuza 0. <laughs> Let's see. One-Eyed Assassin. One-Eyed Slugger. One-Eyed Dancer. Good. Um, I forgot the Kiryu themes. <laughs> Rain. Uh, inter... Inter... Planet something spark. Um. Uh, what's a, what, what's Kuze's theme? Both of them, both Kuze themes. Um, I want a theme for vengeance or whatever it's. No wait, yeah, for vengeance. Lao Gui's theme. <laughs> There's so many good stuff. Oh yeah, for buddy or for buddy's sake, whatever it's called. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, the receive you mixes for the secret styles. Love them. Um, yeah, there there is a lot of good tracks in this game. Pledge of Demon and Oath of Enema. Thank you. Okay, Yaka. Okay, Yaka. Okay, Yaka's a six. Is really, really, really up there for me. Um. Theory of Beauty needs an introduction. Um, both Somia themes. The Way of Life. Uh, Bonds, I think, is Ed's theme. Yeah, Destiny. Man, th there's so many ch good tracks. Bloodstained Philosophy. The Hangman theme, whatever it's called. Hero says theme. Bishop Violet Velvet. Oh, I love that track so much. Bishop Violet Velveteen. I love it. Lots of lights. Oh, hell yeah. The red suit guy theme. <laughs> red suit guy. Let's not call him Koshimizu. Red suit guy is awesome. Yeah, there's there's a lot of good tracks in 6. It, it's... For all of the shortcomings of 6, like, it, it has one of the best soundtracks of all time in the franchise. Um, Fist Law is good, yeah. Okay. Judgment. <laughs> oh. oh, is it better than six? Random fire. No! It's okay, guys. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Um, and thankfully, it's all in place. So, Judgment. Uh, rake your inside. Random fire. Uh, flower of chivalry. Penumbra. Um, there's a lot of good tracks. And, oh, flower of chivalry is so good, man. Destination, I think it's called. Man, I don't know if I would put this... Oh yeah, the Ammon theme. Symphony of uh, Judgment, or whatever it's called. Man. <laughs> there's... Oh god, there's so many good tracks. Arpeggio. Woo! Drum fire. Lost Judgment. Woo! 
<laughs> uh, blue stomping, green vibes, uh, red something, um, cog, viper, unwavering belief, dig in your heels. Oh. This game is awesome. <laughs> Final Destination, yeah. Oh, the Lumonk chant. Yes, I love that song, too. Do we need another tier? <laughs> no, this is good enough. Kaito's battle themes are good. Oh, yeah! What's his name? Kiyoya's theme. Uh, the other guy. Ken Mochi's theme. Um, that was a lot of good ones. Kenzan. The only one that I remember, to be honest, there's two actually. The Sweet Battle theme, Bloodmaker, and Kiryu in Spain. Well, what's it called? Kiryu in Spain. Kiryu in Spain! <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin. Yes, yes. Um, I only remember those two. Uh, but yeah, the soundtrack of this game is awesome. If you can remember it, it has to be... <laughs> well, I think this is... I would say this is low enough, but this is very high tier. It's double S. Um, okay, Kiwami. Sorry, Kiwami. The, the Kiwami soundtrack is good, but it definitely doesn't do justice to the uh, original like funk goes on doesn't hit as hard the equivalent of son of a gun doesn't hit as hard majima's theme does not hit as hard for me the wicked is amazing i'll give it that the wicked and nishiki's theme that's it the wicked oh actually wait the wicked uh nishiki's theme and also the new long battle theme those three that's it Oh, uh, sorry, wait. Uh, there was one track. Vertical Point. I also like Vertical Point. Guys, something has to go down here, okay? <laughs> but also, I mean, like, compared to the other games, I do think... Actually, wait, no, wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait. J just to be fair to, you know, Kiwami, I, I don't remember much of Kenzon, so... Okay. OG Ishin. Now, there, there's like one track that I love. And it's Nishiki's theme. What about you guys? Get Over it is, is pretty good, yeah. Oh yeah, the, the, the new Majima tracks are good. But for my sake, is it called for my sake? Oh, for, for my sake, dude. At one point, I would tell you that's my favorite uh, Nishiki theme remix. Hands down. Oh yeah, the Daigo theme. Yes, that's a good one. Okay, call me cringe. I give you the pass. Call me cringe. But I'm not the biggest fan of the last boss track for this game. Oh, as a man, as a brave is good. Yes. <laughs> I love that track. As a man, as a brave. The Nishiki track. Um. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's, there's good tracks in this game. <laughs> cringe, Elian. Cringe. Oh, God. You know, for being... For being such an outcast of a game, holy shit, this game slaps. Okay, maybe that's a little too high, but... Dude, if you if you didn't listen to the track, the tracks of Korohyo, do yourself a favor. Holy shit, it's good. I don't know, I feel like Triple S does not do it justice. Muppet, yeah, instru instrumental, um, here and I, feels good. This game has like, what, five street theme battles? Five or six, maybe? That's insane. 
Um, so unusual is really good. So unusual. Um, what's Tyson's theme called? Fatal Conflict. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Fatal Conflict. Uh, stupid Mad Dog. Um, Asian is way too low. Guys, you can take solace in the fact that this is still S tier. It's it's a good like it's amazing. Um. Okay. The soundtrack in the second game. What do we have? Oh, okay. we have Ichiro Tonic. That oh that theme alone. Hmm. Ichiro Tanaka, Born to Be Wild, Nameless. Yes, thank you. Majima no Majirok. There are some real good bangers in here, but I think one has more of them. Um, Yakuza Dead Souls. Criminally underrated soundtrack. Criminally underrated. Holy shit. Um, the Majima Dilemma theme, the Ryuji normal battle theme, and the Dilemma theme. The Kiryu normal theme and the Dilemma theme. Amazing stuff. Um, the final boss theme is amazing. I think the Hayashi theme as well is pretty good. Um, oh yeah, the intro track is really good. What else do we have? Actually, wait, maybe I should put it somewhere here. Yeah, th yeah, there's so many good tracks in Dead Souls. Where's the Hokuto? Oh shit, wait. Oh, God damn it! We need to add the Akaza online as well. One and a two and a three. Okay. What are you looking at, Streamlabs? Shut up! Um. Ishin Kiwami. So, remind me again, I forgot, but is most of the soundtrack the same? They just remixed some of the stuff, right? I, I mean. The remixes are cool. I think my favorite is Mina's track. What does his remix is new? I think Kuze also got a new remix, right? So probably this then. Because the only thing Asian Kiwami did, track-wise, is it added new tracks. So. Um. Kuze didn't get a remix, okay. Is OG1 the highest of highs? Yes. For now. Okay, Kiwami 2. Ooh. <laughs> How do we feel about this one? I feel like this one is even more divisive than Kiwami 1. I mean... It's okay. The Shindo theme was awesome. The Ibuchi theme was awesome. I hate the credits theme. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait. To be fair. Hayashi had no theme of his own, true. Ryuji's last theme is Faithful. Unity of Metal. Yeah, Unity of Metal was decent. Um, there's definitely good tracks in here, but... I feel like, just for me personally, please don't get upset. I do find the other games to be more memorable with the tracks. Mm -hmm. The final bouncer theme. Talking about uh, A by Sim. Okay. Lost Paradise. This game has an amazing soundtrack. Uh, receive you. The North Star? Woo! Um, I actually don't know the tracks by name because they have random names, or they don't even have names. Um, Jaggy's track? Oh, 
Ho ho ho! Uh, Souther's track. Ho ho ho! Uh, Nadai's track. Ho ho ho! Targa's track. Ho ho ho! Um. Yeah, there, there are some really good bangers in there. I think even Snowy just likes the track. Yeah, it's it's a good soundtrack. Um, oh yeah, Rao's theme. Um. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a good placement for it. Um. Okay. Yakuza like a dragon. Every time I think about this one, I think about Warmaker, yeah. <laughs> you guys read my mind. Yokohama Crack House. This is gonna be the hardest one to think of the names because they have s such weird fucking names. Um, the Mabuchi theme. The... Tendo theme. Masato's theme. Sh uh, what's, what's his name? Ishiyoda's theme. Um, Sawashiro's theme. There are so many good tracks in this game, it's insane. Just, w w yeah, War Maker is enough to take this, like, up high. I I just realized I put Koroyo up here. Um, I think that's good for Koroyo. War Maker, yeah. <laughs> oh, the Millennium Tower, yeah. Yeah, good theme. Like a dragon, Gaiden, the man who erased his name. I have two things to say. Bring it on. Fading away. It's actually kind of impressive how, for such a short game, there's so many bangos in here. Bring it on. Yeah, Shishido's tracks as well. Uh, Niche Tani's track, Psycho's Anthem. Yeah, love that track. The remix of that uh, seven track. Fading away. Oh, oh, they leave an impression on you. They do. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, what's uh, Sorna's theme called? It's so good. Unrequit. Yeah, unre. I can't read that word. Unrequited. Or how is? Let's just say Sorna's theme. I love that. Unrequited. Yeah, that, that was a lot of good tracks in this game. Um, Yakuza Online. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait, oh, oh shit. Oh, my, I'm stupid. To be fair to uh, Yakuza Online, there's one good, unique track that came out of it. Just the one, though, I think. Let me show. Let me have you guys listen to it. Okay, got a load of this. the name of the song just type in rgg online main theme you'll find it but yeah th this is like the one track they made i think there might be a ryuji track and also someone said the victory song but um 
I actually don't know if this ever plays in the game itself. They played it in one trailer, but I don't know if the game plays it. It's such a good track, though. I love it. Okay, so yeah, that's one amazing track from Yakuza Online. Uh, it, I mean, it can stay here. Um, I completely forgot how the streets of Kamurocha tracks are. So I'm just going to keep this down here. Um, like a dragon, infinite wealth. Okay, it's a... I feel like this is good for it. What do you guys say? Barracuda. Do, 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 do. I like how everybody said Barracuda. <laughs> I like everybody knows. Everybody knows. Da, 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 da. And then no 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 Oh yeah, there's two of them. I forgot about that. Okay, but guys, guys, and then you have this one. Oh! Sheesh! <laughs> <laughs> God damn. This one is alright. This one is peak. Do you guys know this one? This one starts really strong, but then it's like, it's kind of... Just, just, just that. But I love the start.
You know what? It's kind of better when you listen to it here, I think. And then... Ooh. This one is also really good. I really love the low-key parts of this song. It's such a good, like, long battle theme. Perfect. Okay, let's not get too sidetracked here. Um, you know what? I know what you're thinking. Recency bias! <laughs> but like, is recency bias so wrong? If, you're, if we're talking about like a, a personal tier list? Opinions change with time, you know? And hey, if your opinion doesn't change with time, then more power to you, but... I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, um, I think this is a good enough of a soundtrack tier list. We've listened to a lot of tracks, we should move on. There's one more title, guys. Look, we still have more to go, but this is the last one. So now, I'm gonna rank these games generally speaking of like how you know just the first rating basically but this time it's my opinion um taking into account everything like story gameplay and the whole package so let's reset mini game tier list everything is d tier except karaoke and disco there's the tier list. Okay. I actually kind of... Hold on. We gotta we got hurry with this one. Okay, so S... C... And it D. General subjective, like an o yeah, overall ranking of like again, just like the first rating we did, but this time it's my opinion. So before, for example, mm, we put Yakuza Five in A tier because like most people think it's a really like they love the game, but because it's kind of divisive enough, it doesn't go to S tier for the objective rating. It's A tier. It's a really good game, there's a lot of content, you know, the whole the whole shebang. Um, but for me, it's like a bit down here, because like... I, I just prefer other games. So this is how it's gonna be. Every battle in the franchise tier list. Oh, buddy. <laughs> you want us to sit here for like two weeks? Um, anyway. Uh, actually, give me guys a second. Uh, give me guys a second. Give me a second, guys. Um, I had a phone call. Don't you listen in, okay? Shut those ears.
Chat. I told you not to peek, goddammit. Okay. Let's do this. The final, um... The final, uh... Type of list we're doing today. Uh, let's just... Put an end to this. Uh... Alright. So... It's been a ride, you know, getting to this part, but, uh... This is basically what I was thinking of doing. Just period. But, because, you know... Doing it the usual way is kind of boring. I wanted to spice things up a little bit. So, I gave different kinds of uh, lists for, for all the games. So, for what it's worth, I hope that was... Interesting. But now, we get to the actual tier list. A.K.A. my opinion on the games. So, Yakuza 1 Original. Yakuza 1 Original, generally speaking, I think you guys already know. How many times has it been in A tier now? <laughs> it's, it's always in A tier. I love this game. It's my first Yakuza game, for those who don't know. First ever Yakuza game. Started with this game. It's a special game to me. Um, and I still find this game to not be as much of a chore as people might make it out to be. So, Yakuza 1 Original, I love you. I have no problem coming back to you any day of the year. Um, yeah, I, I love you, OG1. Um, OG2, better gameplay, but personally speaking, I prefer not to go back to this game. Um, I just have very personal gripes with it, those being, again, like I mentioned, how insanely tedious it is to get the moves that you want to get. Um, especially considering that, uh, the final boss in particular... Hold, let me let me tell you guys this, okay? You know how many prob how many people have a problem with the hyper armor in Ishin? Like, yeah, okay, it's more common in Ishin. Fair enough. Final Ryuji's hyper armor is so insufferable. I hate it. Um, you actually have to play the game differently, and in my opinion, not in a good way. I don't like it. Um, it's basically everything bad about hyper armor in any other, in any other Yakuza game. Um, and it's a big deal, because if you die there, um, and if you... Let me let me try to reword that. In, in OG2, uh, when you get to that point, you basically go through a gauntlet, okay? You fight Man in Black, you fight Ryuji, you fight Terada, and then you fight Ryuji again. You have like nine inventory slots. If you run out of heals, well, good luck, have fun. Um, that part alone sours the whole experience for me, especially given that if you want the cool upgrades like the Tiger Drop, which can help you in that fight. It, it's just... I, I prefer not to replay this game. Whereas, for example, Yakuza 1 OG, if you were to replay this, don't even get the Kamaki moves, you don't need them. Replay this game, don't get the Kamaki moves. If you do decide to get the Kamaki moves, you can get them... Like... Naturally, while playing through the story. Every time you drop by, um, Purgatory, just talk to him. That's it. That's enough to get you all the Kamaki moves. Um, but like I said, even then, you don't need them. You don't need the Kamaki moves at all in this game. You can get through all of the fights. The only thing you need in this game is the, uh, rush combo upgrade. That's it. You get that, you destroy everything. Everything. Um... And yeah, it's, it's a pleasant uh, replay experience. The story is good. Um, and yeah, I love Yakuza 1. Um, and yeah, again, I, I did talk about the story of 2, but not a big fan. And there, there are some things about the gameplay that makes it feel like a chore for me. Yakuza 3! Yakuza 3 gets more hate than it deserves. It's a good game. Um, but, I, but I can also see why people hate this game. Uh, the whole Blakuza thing, yeah, sure. But also, try to do something about it, you know? People usually say, oh, just grab. But what those people might not realize is you can't infinitely grab. You have a credit, a, cr a grab credit. You grab enemies twice, and then after that, they're like, fuck you, no more grabs. Uh, do something else about it. It's annoying, and it's something that I don't see enough people talk about. They always say, oh, just grab, or just dodge. D dodging sometimes works. Just grabbing doesn't always work. So, I can see why people hate the combat of this game, and the story as well. People don't like 
Uh, some people don't like the unfinished parts. I like them. I think they contribute to Kiryu's pers like development like no other game does. Uh, we see a side of Kiryu in this game that we don't see in most of the other games. You could argue 6 has a bit of that, but only a bit. You could argue Gaiden also has a bit of that, but both of those games rely on 3. That development is in 3. Um, the game has good boss fights. I love Andre. <laughs> Uh, cheesy American villain. Um, Sandstorm is awesome. And, yeah, I mean, if you want to get the Kamaki moves, more power to you. Uh, it's not that hard to get them. Just talk to Kamaki, go pay a visit to the three students, and boom, you have them. But yeah, three does have a similar problem to two, where sometimes it might feel like you need the Kamaki moves, but... You don't need need them, but they do help. Um, and yeah, whereas with Final Ryuji, the strat is literally just chip damage at Ryuji. Dodge, chip damage, dodge, chip damage, dodge. It's basically the Yakuza 3 experience in a game that's not the Yakuza 3. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's all I have to say about 3. I actually, yeah, my favorite villain in 3 is Andre. It's not me, it's <laughs> Andre. <laughs> I love how cheesy and stupid he is. Anyway. Should we talk about... Ken I guess we can talk about Kenzon. Uh, Kenzon... I beat it on stream once. It's not a bad game. But, like... See, if you're watching this and you're a Kenzon fan, don't take this as a jab at your opinion. I always say that, but people, for some reason, take it as an offense. Kenzon is just a game that didn't stick with me. And I wouldn't really go back to replay it. Um, unless, like, Chad is like, oh, I'll replay Kenzon. Sure, I'll do it. But it's not my choice of a game to revisit. Um, it's a good game. It has a good soundtrack. The story, I think, is better than Ishin. At least as far as I understand. Um, yeah, I think that's all there is to say. Now, Yakuza 4. Ooh, <laughs> Yakuza 4. Okay, so earlier we put Yakuza 4 in S tier for the gameplay. But overall as a package, I think I would put this in high B tier. Um, I do enjoy the gameplay more than Yakuza 3. You know, there's more characters, more variety. Uh, the soundtrack, I think overall might be better than 3, maybe. Uh, the story is absolutely worse than 3, but I do think the gameplay is a bit of a saving grace in, in games. Um, if, your game, if your game has good gameplay, then people will remember it for that, you know? So, I don't mind revisiting 4 and replaying that game. It's a more fun experience overall. Not gonna change the music? I mean, do we need to? Hold on. Let me put uh, generic quiet theme number 2. But yeah, uh, that's all I have to say about 4. I'm surprised it's not A. I mean, it's close enough. It's a good game. But... I think this one has a more special place in my heart overall. Oh no. What do you mean, oh no? Yakuza 5 is coming? So what? Guys, why are you so afraid? Yakuza 5 is also... See, I'm gonna start by saying this is a great game. I feel like people often... Just focus on me... Like, ranting about 5 and that's it. Yakuza 5 is a great game, just like Kenzan, like I just said. But as far as, you know, me revisiting a game goes, 5 is at the bottom of that. Um, and the same goes, of course, for the story. 5 has my least favorite story overall. Um, and I do think 5 is a case of quantity over quality. I mentioned the example earlier about uh, Inner Fighter or IF-8. Guys, you can't tell me in good faith that having to play IF-8 50 times is good game design, okay? It's just stuff like that, like very unnecessary padding. It sours the experience for me a lot. Um, and yeah, um, another big thing about 5 is I, I feel like skippable cutscenes or in-game dialogue would save this game a lot. It wouldn't completely save it, but it would lift it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of questionable game design in this game. Uh, backward design, like I mentioned before. Yakuza 4, ha like, 
gave you the freedom in picking whatever ability you want. Five went back to the older system, where, you know, you had to unlock maybe a couple abilities that you don't want to get the one that you want. And I don't know why they did that, because after, after five, they sort of went back to a hybrid between the older system and four, where you have, like, this sphere, and it's kind of limited, but you also do have a few options compared to five and one, two, three. Um, and yeah, I talked a lot about 5 already, but I, again, um, I do think the gameplay in some regards is a bit of a downgrade, downgrade from 4. There are improvements, but I think th there's just some things about 5 that sour the overall experience. Um, again, the Coliseum having to be unlocked makes no sense to me. Um, it just feels like, oh, how do we make this game as big as possible? Oh, I know. Let's lock the Coliseum and you have to spend time as each character to unlock it. It's just unnecessary to me. But other than that, don't get me wrong, this is like a big, a huge game with a lot of content. It's just, I'm not a fan of how they executed a lot of that content. Um, but yeah, this doesn't matter anyway because some... Some person is gonna skip to the end and be like, oh, Leon! But, I do what I can, right? Um, Yakuza 0. I feel like this is a very basic pick. I mean, everybody puts this at S tier. Unless... Yakuza 0 is the game that, you could argue... <laughs> popularized the franchise. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon is another one of those picks. But Yakuza 0 is, like, there's a reason why it, you know had the impact that it did. It's a very... It's a solid entry point, and before you come at me, ah, oh, Leon, no, OG1, OG2, I get it. But a lot of people started with this game. Actually, wait, you know what I don't understand about people who actually get very pissy about the correct order? Those people very likely started with either Yakuza 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 2. Like, can you shut the fuck up, please? <laughs> It's one thing to, like, recommend a starting order. It's another thing to actually get pissed at people for starting with Zero or any other game. Like, who cares? If people get invested enough, that's good enough. Um, I platinum the Yakuza Zero only. No other game. And that's that, that was enough for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, generally speaking, as a complete package, Zero is amazing. Um... Majima is, like, a very popular character with the fans. Kiryu, I mean, I don't need to say that. They have amazing gameplay, amazing soundtrack. The story is awesome. And yeah, it's like, I would say, the definitive Yakuza experience to this day. Um, okay. I think, you was, was Kiwami after that? Or was it six? I think, yeah, Kiwami, actually. Um... See, Kiwami is a direct upgrade in terms of combat, depending on who you ask. But objectively, it is an upgrade, because, like, Kiryu feels very heavy and clunky in OG1. But I prefer revisiting the OG. Again, o OG1 is surprisingly resilient. You go back to that game, you start a fresh playthrough, and you can just speed through the game if you know what you're doing. Which doesn't take, like, much of memorization, really. Um, Kiwami is a fun game. I think, by the way, I think Kiwami gets more shit than it deserves. Uh, people hate it for like, oh, not the same soundtrack. Sure, yeah, but there's more to the game than soundtrack. Um, the combat is an upgrade over Zero, but I feel like the side content of Kiwami is arguably one of the weaker side content um, out of all the games. Not a fan of Mess King. Um, the sub-stories are like, Oh, hey, uh, you want a free... Uh, lottery ticket. Uh, why don't you come over and visit us? Like, a lot of it is the same. Um, and yeah, I I'm not a fan. Majima everywhere. <laughs> no, thank you. It's fun, maybe the first playthrough, but oh my god. The fact that you can disable that... Is terrible. Why don't you do a quick story ranking? We did that earlier. 
But yeah, Majima everywhere. Maybe it's fun the first time, but it gets obnoxious eventually. And the fact that you can't turn that off is also horrible. Um, because, like, even if you use the Beads of Good Fortune, you cannot uh, disable the Majima encounters. They're still there. Not even the first playthrough, it gets old by the middle of the game. Yeah, like... By the way, it's a great way to get XP in your first playthrough, but... Also, like, <laughs> there should be a way to stop it. Um, but yeah, it's a good game, but, you know, it's average. Yakuza 6. Mm. I think I would put this either here or here. Yakuza 6 as a, a game... The story of this game, I think, still is controversial. People don't like what, whatever happened with Haruka, or people don't like how they handled Kiryu in this game, or, you know, the fact that legacy characters barely show up. But with Gaiden and Infinite Wealth, I feel like a lot of those issues might have been mended, but not necessarily. Because, see, Kiryu is in such a complicated state right now where you have people who wish he never came back at all. Or they wished for him to come back, but in a very specific way, and they didn't get what they wanted, so they're still angry. And because of like those complications, honestly, I don't care what happens with Kiryu at this point, as long as, like... The story is decent, which I still think that, like, Gaiden is decent, in my opinion. Um, and as long as the game is fun, I'll take it. Um, the secret of Onimichi doesn't bother me as much as, as, much as it bothers other people. Um, and yeah, I, th I think it's a decent game. Not the best, sure, but it's a decent game. And if you were to replay this, just to revisit the game or whatever, for me, personally, when I revisit this game for a stream, it's a pleasant experience. I like it. What's the song in the background right now? So, I mentioned this before, but I'm using, like, a website that I subscribe to for um, licensed music, basically. You might be able to find this on YouTube. It's called Masterminded Observing with Love. Anyway. Yuta is hot. I think you're the first person I've ever seen who likes Yuta. <laughs> Or, like, says he's hot. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that I like about 6 as well. One of the things that barely gets mentioned by anyone, it is the one Yakuza game that brings the most new assets out of any Yakuza game. No questions asked. Um, it's a whole new engine. They took a risk with that. The combat system is revamped. Um, a lot of new animations. I think every single boss in this game has a new moveset. That's saying something. Um, and I think almost every single heat action, not all of them, but a lot of the heat actions in this game are also brand new. You do have some reused ones, but compared to the new ones, there's actually a big difference, or a big um, gap. Also, yeah, voiced sub-stories. Like, I, I get the hype around that. It's good. But they didn't need to do that. Um, animated drinks. I like that feature, yeah. It's a small one. But I love it. I'm actually sad they never brought that back. I just go to a vending machine, grab a drink, drink it in real time. Uh, isn't it also the only one where you don't need to do everything to fight Ammon? Uh, Gaiden is also like that. Gaiden and... I don't want to spoil, but... <laughs> I did warn people earlier, um, but Infinite Wealth is the same, as far as I know. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, th this game is okay. But you know, to this day, I think I didn't finish the sub-stories of this game. Like, I didn't finish all of them. Just because Amon is accessible by doing two sub-stories and like... I was over the moon about that, and that's all I cared about. So I didn't finish all the sub-stories there is in this game. But yeah, amazing soundtrack. I think the story has a lot of uh, highlights. Um, and I actually respect them for taking the approach they did with the story, even if it's sometimes not the smartest. Um, but I like it. 
I, I unironically love Hangman. <laughs> I think, uh... Dude, the whole Shangri-La segment, I love that so much. Like, just a weird pervy slash horror vibe to it. Also, yeah, for, you know... For how much people talk about the groundedness, 6 is like one of the most grounded games. Like, period. In the, in the franchise. Um, and yet, I see it getting hate. But yeah, if you want your grounded Yakuza game, there you go. 6, it's like the most grounded game. By comparison, at least. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that's Yakuza 6. And then, Kiwami 2. Um... Okay, this might piss off OG2 fans. The only reason I would put OG2 above, uh, sorry, Kiwami2 above OG2 is purely because you can skip, like, the in-game dialogue. Um, that's it. That's really it. But other than that, they're, like, about the same for me. Um, the combat... Something about the combat in this game is more infuriating to me than 6, and I don't know what it is. Maybe... maybe I don't want to keep saying, oh, the dropkick the drop is gone, but I, I am sad about that. Um, they added a few stuff, yeah, but... Taking the dropkick away was a bit much. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. You know, an, an interesting comment Froob said when I was once talking to him? He said Kiwami 2 is a good weapon game, but not a good hand-to-hand -hand game. And I always found that uh, intriguing. Um, but yeah, Kiwami 2, again, not like my favorite, but... Oh yeah, the Kiwami 2 uh, goons, for some reason, have more health than the bosses at times. Which is pretty strange. You should give the style switching mod a go. Yeah, I know there's a lot of mods. It's kind of weird, though, because when I stream these games, I want to stream them in the original state. So that... I don't know. It's the authentic experience for me and for all of you. You know? So that all of the frustrations of these games and the highs as well, they're, they're all there, as they're intended to be. Otherwise, I, I love mods. I don't mind mods. Anyway, that's uh, Kiwami 2. Um, Judgment. Okay. Last time I played Judgment, which I think was in the Sabathon, I said, okay, guys, what if we... In the next tier list, I might take Judgment down to, to A tier. Are you... Uh, are we cool? <laughs> Like, the story is amazing. I love the story. But, you know, more games are coming out. And replaying the game made me realize just how much padding there is in this game. And the tailing. I actually... I, I said this before. I have no issue with the tailing for the first playthrough. But when you replay the game, it's actually... It, it's a slog. It's it's unreal. Um, the wound system. I actually don't even mind the mortal wound system, but I know that people don't like that. The biggest problem for me is all the padding and all the uh, the tailing for subsequent playthroughs. Um, you should play New Game Plus on Infinite Wealth. We'll see about that. Tailing and chasing. Uh, chasing is okay. Tailing, though, you can't like. Th there's no speedrun threat to it, I don't think. Hmm... Judgment super armor kind of kills the combat for me. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. I was upset when they got rid of the mortal wounds. Yeah, I didn't mind it either. I thought it was fine. Um, it kind of gave Yagami this vu vulnerability. Which is funny because Yagami in Lost Judgment is like one of the... Gameplay-wise, probably the most broken character in the whole franchise. Oh yeah, the Cahan gang, thank you. I also hate that about this game. But yeah, other than that, it's a good game. Now... Yakuza Like a Dragon.
I'm actually not sure if I should put this here or here. I love the game. I really do. Um, mm, I'm just trying to think right now whether or not it's a bigger slog than Judgment. Because I think... Going by the speedrun, I think this game takes less than Judgment. So maybe it's not bad, but I don't know. Um, actually, no. Maybe, maybe I'll take it here. Uh, I don't think so, Toto. Yeah, Yagami is insane gameplay-wise. <laughs> Mortal Wounds makes the game tedious? I mean, just buy the med kits and you're good. Mm, the level 34 to 50 level gap is the worst. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand why people hate that part. It doesn't sour the taste for me as much, probably because I just appreciate how those guys in particular are the, you know, the the spike. One thing I don't like is the long dungeon at the beginning. Oh, you mean, was it chapter 6, I think? Yeah, fair enough. Head trauma spam. But yeah, I love this game, but I think I would take it to A at this point of time. Um, but like, man, I'm so conflicted because... I feel like I'm basing a lot of my... Uh, criteria on replayability, which is a big deal for me, to, don't get me wrong. But this game really is S tier, but... I don't know. Um... Okay, on New Game Plus, this game is not a slog at all. Um, you can actually get through it really fast. Insanely fast. Um, let me just put this here, for the time being. Actually, no. This game also is arguably a slog, even on New Game Plus. Because, you know, of all the unskippable dialogue. So I think this would be fair. Okay. Uh, Lost Judgment. Okay, definitely better than <laughs> the first one. Um, I think the gameplay is better enough for me to put this in um, S tier, even at this point of time. And the fact that there is, like, what, one tailing mission? Makes the replayability a lot better. Uh, the story is also pretty good. Um, but overall, as a package... There's actually more content in this game that's worth doing than Judgment. I didn't like the side content in Judgment. Like, I, I barely... There's... I don't like the drone uh, racing. I don't like the uh, VR minigame that much. The VR minigame is actually a fun... Oh, my... Trying to get the free pass is a nightmare. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't like it. Um... Lost Judgment. Like, the school stories are nice. I think I like those better than, like, everything else. Um, though I'll say the Biker Club, not a fan. Um, the Robotics Club is actually okay. I don't mind the Robotics Club. It's okay. Just okay. Oh, yeah, the Dancing Club was also alright. I didn't mind that one. Hmm... It was easy to get in. Yeah, I think it was made easier to get the free pass on Lost Judgment. But still, God, it's such a chore. Um, Robotic was... Wait, did they patch the Robotics Club? I didn't, didn't know that. I think recently I played it um, off stream and I did the Robotics... The ro I can't speak. The Robotics Club thing. And it was okay. I feel like the biker minigame without the DLC bike is... <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Boxing... I'm probably in the minority here. It's okay, but it's nothing like I love. It was just okay. The boxing style in general is... Not the best. I think this is a good placement. 
Is this counting? Oh yeah, the Kaito files. Yeah, counting the fi the Kaito files, I think this would still be here. Um, I think the Kaito files is just a tad overpriced. And also, it's a bit of a crime that it doesn't have premium adventure or new game plus. Especially when it gives you the choice of swapping costumes, which you get at, like, at, what, the end of the game? It's pointless. There's, uh, some questionable stuff in there. But otherwise, solid. Hmm. DLC ranking. I'm just doing the whole game as a, you know, the whole games as a package with the DLC. I didn't talk about the Majima Saga here, I guess. I mean, it exists. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay. Original Ishin. I played this game... I beat this game once. Just once. And I did not like the game. And again, I said this before, but it was my fault because I had no idea that you basically needed to upgrade your weapons. Um, I don't... Like, this is... An, again, like Kenzon, this is not a game I would want to revisit anytime soon. And I find Kenzon easier to replay. Or at least, you know, judging by the last stream that I did. I just kind of got into it, and that's it. Um... Actually, let's bring Asian Kiwami here as well. I... <laughs> I'm good. Um, people... I think this happened before, but whenever I talked about how I don't like Ishin, people were like, Oh, but you were so excited for it. Yeah, it's, it's still a very, like, exciting thing that we got this in the West. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. It's such an important game in the sense that people wanted this game localized for so long, and we finally got it. That's awesome. But, you know, if you were to rank the game, then... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big samurai game fan, honestly. Unless we're talking about Onimusha, but even then, it's been a while since I played those games. Getting hyped is the best thing in a game cycle. Yeah. <laughs> The new large enemies gave me so much pain. Yeah. As a history enthusiast, it's either A or B. I see. So, I wanted to say something about Ishin as well. People gave shit to Ishin Kiwami for being a fan service game. Well, guess what OG Ishin is? A fan service game. People said, oh, but not as much. Yes, as much. Um, half the faces in this game are from Yakuza 5, which was the latest game they had at the time, so I would say it's still a fan service game. Um, now granted, they added like a couple of sub stories with characters from the franchise, but Ishin at heart is a fan service game, and I don't know why people deny that, even the original Ishin. Um, because guess what? If OG Ishin at the time had more faces from previous games, they would have used them. A hundred percent. The only reason they used half the faces from Yakuza 5 is because Yakuza 5 was the latest game and they didn't have many options at the time. So. Um, people that say that proper, probably didn't, don't even know Asian Original existed. Or, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, you literally have a naked fight between Ryoma and... Uh, what's his name? Saito? Ryuji? That's in the original Ishin. That's fan. If that's not fan service, maybe shut up. <laughs> just a thought. Uh, but yeah, um, just wanted to say that about these two games. Um, Yakuza Dead Souls. Am I tweaking? I like revisiting this game. I really do. Um. But the problem now is, with my hardware upgrade, this game keeps fucking crashing. Higher. <laughs> um, I love this game. I think um, more people should experience this game. There's something special in it. It's a goofy game that does not take itself seriously. 
Dead Souls better than 2, 3, 6, K1, really? Uh, yeah, imagine having an opinion. I enjoy this game more than a lot of these games. What can I say? <laughs> hey, maybe you enjoy those games more than Dead Souls, and that's fine. But Dead Souls is one of the most replayable games in the whole franchise. You don't even need, a, like, a New Game Plus save. Just go into this game, start fresh, and you'll... You'll breeze through the game. Um, so yeah, Dead Souls is an enjoyable experience for me. Um, it's the same reason why I have OG1 up here. Most people wouldn't put this anywhere up there, but I would. Um, yo, Max. Didn't Dead Souls have a unique difficulty? It did. So, Dead Souls had the usual difficulties. Easy, normal, hard, X-hard. And then there's a difficulty called Dead Souls. Um, I actually replayed that difficulty on stream a year or two ago. It wasn't as bad as I remembered it to be. But back in the day, oh man, I could not beat that difficulty. Or at least not without crying and bleeding and sweating. Um, oh yeah, this game also has one of the best features in the whole franchise. And for some reason, they didn't bring it back, ever. Um, you go into Premium Adventure, there's an NPC you talk to, and guess what? Any story battle, you can just replay it. It's not like um, Climax battles or Ultimate battles. No, you talk to this guy, he's like, oh, look at these story chunks or story segments. Which one do you want to play? You get ranked on them as well, and you get XP out of them as well. Basically, anything you pick from, um, you know, your premium adventure, I think carries over to the battle you pick. Um, one of the best features, hands down, and they never bought it back. It's in this game, just stuck there, crying, begging to be uh, let out. Um, one of the best things about the game, one of one of the best things in the franchise. Um, and yeah, it's sad they never brought that back. Do you think if they make Kenzen Kiwami, they're, they're going to replace a lot of the character fa characters' faces? Probably. And there's probably going to be a fuss again, because, you know, naturally. Uh... Oh yeah. Honestly, okay, like, no bullshit. I get that Dead Souls is not a game for everybody. But I respect that they really wanted to make something different, like truly different. We have like two or technically three samurai games, but we only have one zombie shooter spin-off. So, okay, Lost Paradise. First playthrough, this game is like maybe here or maybe even here. New game plus, like maybe here or there. So I don't know where to put this. Leon, why is 5 on D tier? <laughs> because it's a good game. Um, I honestly don't know where to put this. I love the story. I think the story is awesome. The gameplay is also really cool. Um, the grind is... Hands down, no question, the worst part about this game. It's arguably worse than Ishin. Arguably worse. Um, but man, I th there's something about this game that I adore. I just really wish it wasn't like absolutely brutal and repetitive. Okay, how many people in chat do we have that played Lost Paradise? Put a one if you did, and put a two if you didn't. Why is Grabkuza higher than five? Because five is below Kuza. Okay, we have way more twos than ones. So, if you want a comparison, like gameplay-wise, think of Lost Paradise as a Kiwami-esque game. Kiwami 1, not 2. Kiwami 1, like a hybrid between Kiwami 1 and Ishin. In terms of like how they do the completion list and all that. So it's brutal. God... Lost Paradise is a game that I would want to go back and stream again. But I don't have the PS5 anymore. 
Um, and yeah, it's it's a good game, but I can't deny that it's absolutely dog shit with, with the grind. Um, the soundtrack is good, though. So yeah, I think I would put this here. Uh, no PS5. The PS5 isn't mine, it's my dad's, actually. And I do have a PS4 somewhere, but I would have to pull that and, like, too much effort. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Robbie Damon does Kenshiro. The range. Um, Kurohyo. Kurohyo is a pleasant experience, like, even on the first playthrough. Um, I might put it here. Yeah, I think this is a good placement for it. So, th th this game might be a mixed bag for people, because the bosses, like the gameplay in general, works differently, like completely different. Um, a lot, like, maybe not a lot of the bosses, but you will come across bosses that, like Snowy just said earlier, they will parry everything you do. So your options are very limited. You would have to grab or dodge attack, that's it. But, I still think it's a better experience overall than Kurohyo 2. Now, Kurohyo 2! <laughs> I think I do like the story of this game better than Kurohyo 2 as well. Kurohyo 2, like, the story is all over the place in my opinion. They try to introduce multiple characters that... I, I like, they just feel kind of weird, I don't know. Um... The gameplay, I guess, was kind of improved, but, man. Resource, did you play Kurohio 2? Like, did you beat the game? Kurohio is like a better version of LJ Boxing, yeah. Guys, if you want to be miserable, play Kurohio 2 on X Hard. Either fresh new game or just new game plus. It's actually miserable. It's unbelievable. The street fights will destroy you. I'm getting flashbacks I didn't want to get. But the bosses in this game, the bosses are way easier than street thugs. Street thugs will also, guess what, parry like every 5-10 seconds. It's unbelievable. In Kurohio 1, you could actually enjoy the combat, you know, do the moves that you had. Um, especially if you had like... Um, so, these games have like 20 styles, give or take. Okay? There are some styles with a lot of kicks, a lot of punches, so they're like faster than others. You could enjoy those in Kurohio 1. In Kurohio 2, good fucking luck if you don't get parried within the second hit. It's brutal. It's... <laughs> it's... <laughs> you can save state out of those fights, but like... Having to save state out of those fights is not a good thing. It's... By the way, something I forgot to mention. In, the, in both Kurohio games, you have limb damage. So you know how Judgment has, like, mortal wounds? Kurohio has uh, limb damage. So what that means is, if your head gets too damaged, and then they hit you in the head again, you're gonna get stunned. Um, same thing for, like, if they hit you in the chest a lot, they hit you again, you're gonna get stunned. Um, and for those, you need... Special healing items that will, you know, cure that body part of yours. So, not only do you need um, normal heals, you also need um, those, you know, designated uh, body part healing items. There is one item that will just heal everything, like all the body parts, but it's more expensive, of course. Um, but god, the Kurohio games were made for like one to one combat. So, Kurohio 2, whenever you get into, like, a street fight and you have, like, three enemies around you, it's not fun. Especially considering that one enemy in the back can just pick up a weapon, throw it at you, stun you, and then the enemy in front of you will grab you and throw you onto, like, uh, uh, another enemy, and they will do a heat action on you. Like, it's... it does not feel good. Maybe on normal it's not as bad, I, f I forget, because most of my playtime is in x hard. But god, X Hard is not a pleasant experience in this game. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, let's just move on. Um, Yakuza. Only. <laughs> uh, 
Spades of Camarocha is fun, but like, you know, it's it's a very, it's a bite-sized game. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Okay, this game does not have New Game Plus, and that's a huge thing for me. But is it huge enough for me to put it down in A tier is the question. I love this game, I really do. But I, I don't know where to put it. Yeah, I, I think the game's length was enough to warrant New Game Plus, and we didn't get that. Best combat tied with LJ. The combat was awesome, yes, I loved it. S tier, personally. I really do like this game. It's like a short and sweet package. It does not overstay its welcome. Um... See, guys, what did I tell you? Hold up, you put Yakuza 5 in D tier? Bruh! <laughs> guys, why did I put Yakuza 5 in D tier? Yeah, like... I do have a problem or two with the story. Mainly, you know, the first couple of chapters really didn't need to happen. Like, they could have been avoided, but of course they had to give you a conflict. So because of that, the story of Infinite Wealth... M ...might not be as good as, you know, the first one. Okay, look, this is overall, as a game. Overall, as a game, this game is objectively better than 7. At the bare minimum. The bare min- the gameplay. Night and day. Night and day between 7 and, you know, Infinite Wealth. Um, it, again, it's like Lost Judgment. To Judgment. Uh, the gameplay in this game is enough to make people put it higher than Judgment. Um. God, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, like, yeah, sure, the story might not be as good as 7. But... Objectively... The gameplay is just better than 7 in every way. Um, also, the new characters are awesome. The new jobs are awesome. The skill inheritance system is awesome. Um, the side content, I actually kind of care about them for once. I like Sujimon Battles. I still need to do um, Dondoka Island. Um, I don't care for mismatch. Karaoke, 20 songs. And they all change depending on whether you're controlling Kiryu or Ichiban. The drink links, the table talks, yes. God, yeah, the only thing that sours the taste in my mouth is New Game Plus and the DLC in general. <sighs> Here's the thing. Now, you might disagree, and that's fine. But if you were to buy this game at $70, you know, without the DLC, this game is still S tier. Which is just. It makes it painful that New Game Plus is DLC. Behind $20, no less. God. I agreed about the mismatch. <laughs> the whole, like... The, the nightlife minigames in general, I, I don't care for. Um, honestly, I'm tempted to put this here. But I know what you guys are thinking. Ah, oh, recency bias! So maybe we'll put this here for now. Um, I don't know, but yeah, I, I mean, Infinite Wealth might be a hit or miss for people in terms of story. Again, I have a gripe with a story or two. Um, people might just hate this game because of how Kiryu is in this game, which, I mean, hey, fair enough. But, like I said, I'm past the point of caring about what they do with Kiryu at this point, because... There's just no possible outcome for Kiryu at this point. That's gonna satisfy everybody. If they give him a happy ending, people will be pissed because, well, I mean, it's too cheesy and predictable, and like, it renders Yakuza 6 useless as a whole. Um, and they if they gave him a miserable ending, then all, like, people are also gonna be upset because, like, you know, Kiryu deserves a happy ending, blah blah blah. So, like, I, I just don't care about that at this point. This game was fun. Um, Kiryu was awesome in this game, and that's all I care about. Um, 
Ishin is that bad? No, so, guys, for all of you wondering why is the Yakuza 5 solo, why is this solo? Like I said when I put those in their rankings, these are not bad games per se, but for me personally, um, it could be either I didn't care about the story as much as the other games, or there were significant gameplay issues that I had with those games, or I just don't want to revisit these games, or I prefer not to re revisit those games. That's it. Um, by the way, if you're actually extra curious, earlier, I think when we were doing the story ranking, you can tell by the title, if you go back, you should see the story ranking. I pulled out my Word document about Yakuza 5. <laughs> Jokingly, of course, in Minecraft, as they say. But yeah, that was, uh, that was something. And yeah, of course, the Yakuza Like a Dragon Brawler mod, better than everything. Or what do we say, chat? El boss fight out for Infinite World, Ahsaman 7. Hey, I'll be with you. Especially when we're putting quick time events like this. Did you play Kenzan Leon? Yes, I played it like three times. I beat it one time, though. Um, same picture of Shinada and S. Just imagine Shinada. Like, you know, like we did with 5. He didn't exist. Okay, I think this would be my personal tier list. What do you guys think? Um, Infinite Wealth, I mean, you know, the story might have people mixed, but at the very least, at the bare minimum, the gameplay is, m like, day and night, miles better than Yakuza 7. And I feel for, for that alone, it's better than 7. This, besides, like, the story is not that bad. Um, it has a lot of highlights. It's mainly in the ending, really, that kind of falls apart, or at least for me, it does a little bit. But even then, the ending does have a moral story out of it. It's not just, oh, this and that happened. Gaiden without mods is A tier. Yeah, fair enough. I've seen people who don't enjoy the combat of Gaiden, which is fair enough. Um. Okay, this might be a bit of a spoiler. If you don't want infinite world spoilers, be careful. I'm gonna try to be vague, though. But the the way the message was conveyed between, you know, the character you're playing as and the final boss, I actually really love that. Before the fight, it felt like, what the hell is going on? But when that happened, I was like, you know what? I like this, because it's a way of resolving, you know, the conflict between the character and the final boss in a way we didn't see before. And it feels very genuine. I love it. It's Think of Mine. See Mine? You know how basically Kiryu tried to convince him? It's just an infinite wealth. It, it was in a more softer way. After the fight, at least. Like, they were literally begging the final boss. Like, please, stop. And I'm sorry for everything, you know? It felt like Mine a lot. In, in that way. Um, now do the joke of rank of putting the best games in the. Oh yeah, should we do that? <laughs> should we shuffle them for people who skip to the end? ما شاء الله عليك إنجليزيتك حلوة لكن أختلف معك في إشي. بالعكس حقك حقك. أنا بس بالنسبة لي يعني للألعاب اللي حطها تحت أفضل إنه ما أرجع لها. R G G O S tier. Don't test me. <laughs> Tell everyone why Yakuza 5 is the best. You have to rewind for that one. Um, I was thinking of Lost Judgment's final boss with Infinite Wealth's boss. Yeah, I think that's a good comparison as well. That and Mine, I would say. Um, okay, should we shuffle them? Okay, let's do this. And, and, and. <laughs> to add to the meme... To add to the meme, let's see. Uh... Mm. Let's 
let's see, Korohyo 2... Take this over here. And, uh, uh, Lost Paradise up at the top. Um, oh, who cares about Gaiden? Um, uh, Yakuza 4 up here, Yakuza 5 up there, and uh, mm, I think that's looking good. Actually, no. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a solid list. What do you guys think? Make it your thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good list. What would you guys think? Actually, let's make it a little better. Uh, I think there's a lot of them in A tier. We need to change them up a little bit. Hmm... The OG, oh yeah, OG Ishin. No, no, it's right where it should be. Mm, yeah, I don't know what you guys think. I think that's a good enough list. Right? Good? I know this is a joke, but it's still painful to look at. Don't worry, that's the point. I want to be able to spot the people who skip to the end. And don't... Ch I guarantee you, we, we caught one last time when I did the license song tier list. Um, the first comment, I think, was like, something along the lines of, Oh, dude, what the hell is that list? <laughs> so, it does work. It works. Yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna wake up with, like, 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> oh, speaking of, guys, thank you for 94k subs. Thank you! Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, both new people and old people. Um, man, the channel... Had a lot of ups and downs, but uh, you guys are all still here, so thank you for that. Um, I, uh, If you were to ask me five years ago, Hey, Leon, one day you're going to have almost 100k subscribers. I would tell you, bruh, fuck you. <laughs> but uh, we're close. It probably will take me like a whole year, though, but still, we're close. Um... How dare you put zero in D tier? I can't wait, yeah. <laughs> we, we gotta pad this ending segment a little bit, because if people want to skip to the end, you know, the longer the ending segment, the, the more likely that they'll skip to this uh, list. Is the list upside down? No! It's right where, where it should be. Special video for 100k. What do you guys want to see? Now, ask for something simple. Don't be like, oh... Kamurocho vlog and dress up as Kiryu or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shave? I already basically shaved. <laughs> you want to see a clean shave? Make the bed. I made the bed like last week or. Waiting for the guy who only played Zero to Rage in chat. Yeah, and the comments too later. Toe reveal. We're living in the Like a Dragon peak era, so make the most out of it. Thank you, buddy. I'll do what I can. Binary Domain. I've been meaning to play that at some point. Get a bow cut? Bro, what do you think am I? Majima? Even... I don't think I can rock it as good as him. Thank you, Max. Thank you, buddy. Get a tattoo? <laughs> I'll get a... What's it called? The temporary tattoo. I agree with this list. LJ was mid AF, never liked Kimura. It's not like I watched every show with it. Yeah, same. And also, fuck Yakuza Zero. Overrated piece of shit. I don't get why people like this game. It's not like it popularized the franchise or anything. Replay the games with, with a modded moveset? Yeah, maybe. Yakuza tier list, tier list soon. Watch a long stream. Watch along stuff has to be in like Discord or something. We can't do that on YouTube. Beat up a hundred people in real life. I'm gonna need a hundred people in chat as paid actors for that. 
RPG cringe horse trash, yeah. Play something completely different, Kingdom Hearts. I heard the story for that is like... Worse than Yakuza 5 convoluted. They, yeah, like, the reason I put all of these down here is because, like, they're not Nagoshi games, you know? So I hope you guys understand. And also, like, the way... Oh, God, the, the way the games are so fucking woke now. So, yeah, these two are at the bottom of the list. <laughs> are you excited for the Silent Hill 2 reveal? Yes, actually, I am. Man, the... Oh, the, the kinds of things people have been saying about Silent Hill 2 is actually kind of unreal. Like, I saw a take saying, oh, what's this, like, rock music playing? The music playing in the trailer is literally a remix of one of the OG Silent Hill 2 tracks. And then one person asked that person, did you even play the original games? Their reply was, no, I didn't. Like, okay, as soon as you say that, shut the fuck up, dude. Holy shit. Silent Hill is actually riddled with fans, or the fan base is riddled with people who either played one game or never played any game. They just know Silent Hill by name, and they think they know the franchise, but they don't. <sighs> Play the free Silent Hill game. I watched that game, actually, and I need the PS5, so I don't think I'll be able to do that. It's okay. I agree with Yakuza 5 and A. It's one of the most grounded Yakuza games. Yeah. It definitely is. Especially Asian Kiwami as well. Like, man, when Ryoma, like, launches that fireball, it reminds me of when my grandfather, like, just told me that, that he used to do that. Um, <clears throat> like, you know. I can't wait for Silent Hill F. Wish Silent Hill 2 visual quality is the same as Alan Wake 2. Yeah, like, I feel like Silent Hill 2 Remake gets a bit more shit than it deserves. We barely saw anything of the game, and I saw a lot of people complaining about the combat. In a combat trailer. Like, of course, a combat trailer is going to have combat. Um, I doubt it's going to be as action-focused as, you know, uh, people would think. It's probably going to be the same as the OG, where you can just run by everyone. Um, man, I love the grind in Fist of the North Star. Same. I love signing my life away to a game like that. Yo, Super Soupy. Nice. Hope you're having fun. By the way, guys, I've been grinding off stream with Infinite Wealth. Um, I almost have Ichiban, Kiryu, and two others at level 99, so that's awesome. Mm. That Silent Hill 2 trailer is bad. I don't know why they show more combat. I'll tell you why. People wanted to see gameplay. They could show exploration, but that wouldn't be gameplay. It would just be walking, which we know how walking looks like from that trailer as well. Um, Yo, Mecha. Are you using the big swell to grind? Yes. Unfortunately, the big swell is kind of needed if you want to get to 99. Um, the final boss of the big swell, or like the final boss in the last two floors, they give you like 2 million XP for job and for, you know, the character. You think they're gonna nail it? <laughs> Maybe I just don't have, like, super high stand- Like, I'm very easy to please, as a gamer, if you will. Um, they're probably gonna miss in one area or two. But I mean, so far from what we've seen, there is some promise. I'm not gonna say, yeah, dude, it's gonna be the best game of all time, but it seems promising. You know why the Silent Hill 2 combat seems worse, or like people think it's bad? Here's one reason. RE2 Remake does not have... melee combat. Silent Hill has melee combat. Um... And I, I don't know, like... I don't know what people expect, honestly. It looked fine to me. Mm -mm -mm. Do they give a lot of money? Yes. The final boss for the second to last floor gives you two hundred thousand mm dollars. -mm. 
Yeah, they should make Loud Hill the superior game. You walk across the street and everything is like... You don't make it across and you, you become deaf. This is a Dead Souls appreciation channel. High standards are a given. <laughs> yeah. Loud Mountain. Is the big swell worth the money? Man, I, I just... I want to make it clear. I wish it wasn't DLC to begin with, but... The Big Swell has basically like anime episodes with the party. And it's so entertaining. They're funny. I wish the base game had more of those. Like just a sub story with the party. Or just scenes. The whole party, that is. You basically have a beach episode with the party. Um, and then they do. Ju they just do really stupid shit. That is funny. Um, anyway, this was the ranking, you guys. And I think we stretched this enough for. Any person who is none the wiser, you know, will come across this. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun, guys. I think this is a good tier list. And... Guys, I hope you can forgive me. I'm doing the Sujimon battles off-stream. That's okay, right? <laughs> I still kind of want to do Dondoko Island on-stream, though, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, this was awesome. Thank you guys for joining. And I just want to say again... Don't take offense to any of this, or don't take it too seriously. Um, that's not the intention. At the end of the day, this is what I think. You have no reason to give a shit what Devil Leon 7 thinks. Who the fuck... Fuck this Devil Leon 7 guy, dude. Like, who cares about... Who gives a shit about what he thinks, you know? Your opinion is the most important one, and it should stay that way. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> Devil Low 7. Oh, God. But yeah, this has been awesome, guys. Uh, you guys take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Uh, I'll see you next time, whenever that is. Bye-bye, uh, you guys. Bye-bye.